Sí, o sea, los 3, 3, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Ese es el sonido de sala. 2, 3. Ah. Que no. Se escucha bien el sonido de sala en Zoom. Holly, ¿puedes hablar en inglés? Sí, hablando en inglés, un, dos, tres, canal de inglés. Gracias. Pablo, ¿a quién tenemos en sala de espera? Está llegando Sol y Carolina. ¿Sabes quién ya, es ellas son, sí, ellas son expositoras. Ok, las dejo ingresar. Sí. Justo le estaba preguntando a Javi que me recordara quién más viene, porque sé que venían como tres personas, pero no, no sé quién más. No, espérame, yo, es que eso estaba hablando con Filipo recién. Eh, no, Miriam y Sol deberían estar, porque el señor Lee mandó un video finalmente, y sí, el, rector del, el rector de la universidad está acá, y la gente del SAG y el ministro eh, van a estar acá. Okay, entonces... De ahí no sé quién me falta, será bien. Ok, Carolina está ingresando. Está conectando su audio. Carolina. Carolina, ¿nos escucha? Hola, ah. sí, sí, los escucho. Perfecto. Solamente queremos probar su audio, eh, video. Ah, sí, espera un momento. A ver, video. Ah. Está diciendo Sol Ortiz que está intentando entrar. Sí, la dejamos ingresar, pero parece que se cae, porque cuando queda como en unas, como en un limbo. A ver, si le, si le puede decir que ingrese nuevamente. Ya. A ver mi video, aquí está. Estoy... Perfecto. No, bien. no puse ningún background. Pongo el background. No hay problema. No, no hay okay. problema. No, bueno. sí bien. Perfecto. Este, está súper bien, se ve bien y se escucha bien. Así que está. Ah, perfecto. Mil Aquí gracias. Está... Carolina tiene presentación. Sí, pues tengo una muy cortita, sí. A ver, ¿quieres que comparta? Sí, para probar. Ahí queda bien. Perfecto. Sí, si puede avanzar alguna de slide. Excelente. <coughs> Listo, está bien. Bueno, gracias. De nada. Tengo a Sol. Ahora la estoy dejando ingresar. Ah, bueno. ¿Qué me dice por aquí? Que llevo intentando un rato. Está como intentando desde dos equipos porque me dice, me aparece doble. Vamos a ver cuál de los dos. A ver, parece que va a intentar con la laptop. Tiene que darle, dígale que, que tiene que darle como aceptar, porque yo le doy como permitir el ingreso, uh -huh. pero queda como conectando. Entonces no sé si es que ahí se cayó nuevamente. Sí, dice que va a cerrar todo y que va a volver a intentar, porque es que no lo, lo trata y lo trata y no logra. Ah, que bueno, ya ha intentado en varios, varias reuniones con la FAO y yo creo que ya conoce el sistema, pero no sé qué le pasa. Es que es bien temprano en, en México. Ah, ok. Pali, ¿puedes hablar en, 
español, profis, hola, Caro, o sea, la Clau. Hola. Bueno. No, se, se, se te fue el audio. Ya, te vuelvo a molestar. Ahí se te escuchó nuevamente. No, esperamos un minutito. No, Sol, se volvió a caer. Holly, de nuevo ni en español, por fin. Qué problema. Perfecto, gracias. Gracias. ¿Qué le podemos recomendar a Sol? No sé. Mm, pudiera ser que actualice el Zoom. Que a veces la, la actualización, o sea, el no mantenerlo actualizado. Eh... Buenos días a todos y todas. Les damos la bienvenida al taller de la red de laboratorios de América Latina de los suelos LAT Solán. Oportunidad en la que destacamos sí, que finalmente representantes, representantes de todos los Good laboratorios. Good morning, everyone. I would like to invite you, cordially invite you to the LAT Solán event. Today, we will be addressing the Latin American Soil Laboratory Network, which has always faced significant challenges. It works with volunteers, and the laboratory's significant challenges to improve their capacity, and together they have done the best to improve their soil measurement techniques. It's also important to mention the fruitful efforts carried out with the FAO team in the region, in Santiago and in Rome, and the various uh, Chilean institutions, such as the SAG, the University of Concepcion, and the Ministry of Agriculture, who have been in charge of organizing this significant event. In order to begin, I would like to greet the various speakers and authorities here today. Mr. Mario Lubetkin, the Assistant Director General and Regional Representative for Latin America and the Caribbean, his Excellency Esteban Valenzuela Van Trek, the Minister of Agriculture of uh, Chile, Mr. Jose Guajardo, Director of the Agriculture and Livestock Service of Chile, Mr. Guillermo West Moncala, the Dean of the University of, of one of these schools, the University of Concepcion, Mr. Li Feng Li, the Director of Land and Water Division at FAO, Ms. Miriam Ostinelli, the Glossal Land Steering Committee uh, lead, and Mr. Ms. Sol Ortiz Garcia, Chair of the Latin American Caribbean Soil Partnership, and Mr. Alexi Cepeda, the uh, Subdirector of the SAG in Chile. I would also like to greet the 23 countries present here today from Mexico, the Caribbean, and the Latin American region as a whole, and other countries that will uh, be joining us uh, via the FAO Zoom conference. Now we will hear from the Assistant Director General, Mario Lubetkin, the Regional Representative for Latin America and the Caribbean, who unfortunately, due to other prior commitments, was not able to join us, but has sent a video message to wish you all success. Distinguidas y distinguidos participantes, me es grato dirigirme a ustedes en la inauguración de este taller latinoamericana de laboratorios de suelo, abordar la importancia del análisis de la base para la gestión sostenible, más del 95% de nuestros alimentos proceden del suelo y por los suelos, un 35% de nuestra degradación del suelo a diversas amenazas y prácticas no sostenibles various threats and sustainable practices in agriculture. To meet the current demand for sufficient and nutritious food, 
si el suelo y la está en América Latina y el Caribe, el manejo in inadecuado de la tierra causado de por el de los suelos la situación nos plantea el desafío de promover un manejo sostenible del suelo. Y de la tierra, más aún, As a result, de la tierra, we are faced with the challenge of promoting sustainable soil and land management, even more so when only 23% of the earth is potentially arable. La del planeta. La FAO and the region has 46% of the planet's tropical forests and 31% of the water. FAO works together with the Global Soil Partnership to organize efforts with regard to gathering, generating information and exchanges, and to raise awareness among the various stakeholders, decision makers, researchers, and the general public about the importance of soil for sustainable development se han desarrollado un gran número de herramientas, incluyendo las directrices voluntarias para el sostenible suelo, conducta para el uso y manejo sostenible de la red mundial de laboratorios de la gestión de un recurso tan importante requiere datos Managing such an important resource requires accurate data relative to the state of soil health. From this point of view, the work carried out by the laboratories is truly essential, and we hope that during this session it will be possible to deepen the opportunities and better tackle the challenges faced by the laboratories and thus strengthen them, and come up with actions to improve data, quality management, infrastructure, harmonization of analysis procedures, and the use of new technologies, as well as education and capacity. City building among the laboratories of America, Latin and Caribe, Latin America, the Caribbean have different capacities and needs, and they are all united within this network to promote more collaborative and higher quality work. The participation of representatives from more than 30 countries in Latin America and the Caribbean provide us with a unique opportunity for soil laboratories to exchange knowledge, la lessons learned, de and new practices in order to collaboration. find the best way to respond to new challenges. This is through collaboration, in fact, and the, the creation of partnerships, partnerships while developing platforms where technical skills and experiences can be shared between the different countries. In conclusion, I would like to specifically thank the Minister of Agriculture of Chile, my friend David Valenzuela, for hosting this meeting. Carlos Saavedra Chile, Ruibal, well as the, the Dean of the University of Concepcion, Carlos Saavedra Ruibal, and the Director of Livestock Services, José Guajardo, for their commitment and dedication to organizing this event in coordination with the FAO in order to advance in making the laboratories more robust as well as the soils region-wide. And to our colleague, Di Feliz, también agradezco por el liderazgo de impulsar esta iniciativa en nuestra región like representando el espíritu Seguiremos trabajando artesanalmente para fortalecer los laboratorios en el desarrollo de los laboratorios para el beneficio de la población rural, agricultores y por el bienestar de todas las personas y el planeta. Thank you, Mario Lubetkin, who again, unfortunately, was unable to be here today. So now I would like to invite the, His Excellency Esteban Valenzuela Van Trek, the Minister of Agriculture uh, of Chile, to make some opening remarks. A Chile. Huh? Uh, Welcome to Chile. It's cold down here and at the end of the world. That's what uh, the Mapuche say. I am from a city called Rancagua, and a Mapuche linguist who has always, well, in the past, Rancagua was defined as the place of Rancua, which means somewhere where everything grows well and quickly. And in the Cachapual region has very good quality soil, and that's where fruit production has uh, been focused historically. 
concentrated. And the actually the, the soil. Con soil conservation organization has uh, stored uh, some of this good quality soil uh, elsewhere. So in recent years, the agricultural sector in this region has faced many changes. For example, there are all different types of of uh, livestock, such as uh, cattle, goat, sheep, and uh, there is this very sustainable uh, interreaction. Now, because of, uh, well, traditionally, uh, slash and burn agriculture has been prohibited in this region, and that's one of the good practices. I do know that they go further south to Qian. I know you're going to Chiyan, where you can eat good quality sausage. And there are some that have denomination of origin from Nuble, something you cannot have in Mexico. And recently, the SAG has recognized Pipeño, which is a sweet wine produced in that region. I also know that you will be located at the campus of the University of Concepcion, and I'm actually uh, part of the academic community of that university, and you will also be with the assistant director of the SAG. And I think you will be in very good hands. You will have the opportunity to uh, visit CONAF infrastructure and facilities as well. So we, as a country, uh, have been doing a great deal, although we are not a benchmark a country. We need, we have much to learn. And our president, Bordig, and the ministry have carried out very important key actions in order to ensure that the best agricultural soils are not used for housing. And we have what we call the rural housing units that are inevitable and they still have maintained the forest intact and they have practiced certain techniques such as gray water use. So this is part of our efforts to secure and preserve soils and making sure that uh, they are not in at-risk areas. Secondly, we believe that Chile has contributed to uh, the uh, other ministries of agriculture, and I know everyone tends to get a bit on edge when we talk about methane. We know that's an issue, but what we have been doing is working diligently on best practices. I know you're familiar with regenerative livestock practices, for example, and then there's a third point here, and that is that Chile is quite behind in terms of composting from vegetable waste, for example. It's 1%, that's it. We know these landfills are methane uh, re re repositories, essentially. And a significant part of our white meat production sector is making uh, a contribution to that. Uh, unfortunately, now Agro Super uh, has just expanded its operations and has a mega factory and works with 3,000 small family farmers and has a very interesting line of products. promoted by the INIA in Chiyan. There's a fourth aspect I wanted to mention that is key in Chile, and it's important for our friends from abroad to know that for now, Chile for 12 years have, has forced the mining sector to have a fund, a guarantee, uh, and it's uh, for closure actions. So they need to have a, a guarantee for closure actions to remediate soil. Back in 2000, fortunately, 
the we had our last negative experience of tailings being released into the ocean near Chañoral. So this uh, closure guarantee is key. And then we have the wildfire law, which has made progress, and the goal is to protect uh, native forest and forestry land. And this law contains, or this bill, contains a very key component, and it provides incentive for agroforestry initiatives. For example, 30% of these lands uh, are covered uh, by fruit trees and therefore uh, pasturing and have firewalls. And we know that that's key. We also know that the forestry lands are soils are very degraded and these extra components are helpful to combat that. And then when you have a monocrops without diversity, that in the end brings about damage. So our soil law did not have a baseline. And you must have a soil diagnostic baseline. And so Seren, our natural resource investigation a research, a natural resource research center has been working on that. So we have this new soil law. And in fact, after this meeting, I will be meeting with the president of the uh, chambers, uh, Senate, Senate's uh, agricultural committee from the opposite political party and we're working together because we have this new soil bill that focuses on sustainable management and includes two new components one is that there will be better scores attributed to uh, sustainable projects in other words having several different uh, partners that will be having uh, an impact multiple impacts in a region. And then something else that's valuable for Latin American and Caribbean partners, each region will set aside 10% for knowledge management. And that will be helpful for universities to uh, involve uh, local players, etc irrigation law, which also has been passed and has left out most of the large size companies. Of course, all of the irrigation projects should favor everybody. And here we include small, medium and large size companies. But this now includes cooperatives, communities, farmer communities, among others. And we were quite explicit in this legislation, along with Mr. Uh, Jose Juan Carlos. And in Chile, at some point, it was forbidden to destroy native uh, forest to uh, develop uh, orchard plantations. But the uh, irrigation legislation still is allowing for this without the replacement of uh, native forest and with certain limitations regarding the slope. And of course, this should include some management planning work. Um, this planning work should include the best practices available, which involve uh, respecting native forest, uh, water seepage areas, catchment areas, also include mitigation uh, efforts. And this will have a maximum limit of 30% incline 30 percent slope there are some discussions but uh this is eventually the number that was uh, agreed upon 30 degrees we have uh, people from the academia who are also attending and they are quite um, suspicious maybe about this minister however you should know that we are now embarked upon the new soil uh, legislation. And please believe me that once all of these uh, discussions arrived, uh, 
some settlement, we will proceed with the soil legislation. Please enjoy this workshop and let's have a great exchange of ideas. Thank you. Thank you so much, Minister. He was the Minister of Agriculture, Mr. Esteban Valenzuela. We would like now to offer the floor to the SAG Director, Jose Guajardo Reyes. Thank you so much. Good morning, ladies. Good morning, gentlemen. It is a pleasure for me to attend this meeting. I'd like to greet the university authorities, our minister, and the delegations from 23 countries today. Also, my colleagues from the ASG, the uh, Livestock and Agriculture um, Direction in Chile. We're all concerned for this so important topic, which is our soil. I'm not going to cheat here. I'm going to use my eyeglasses so I can do a better reading and uh, extend the uh, welcoming words that you deserve today. This is a very powerful topic, the soil, our soil, our ground. And as the director of the SAG agency, I'd like to express my pride about the soil and how critical it has become in the global food safety environment. It is a privilege to host you today here, the distinguished members of the Latsalan Network, who have come from 23 uh, rather countries from our very rich Latin America and the Caribbean as well. I'd like to thank you for uh, choosing Chile to host you today, this week, and for your support in this really important initiative. I'd like also to welcome all of the representatives from the Chilean Nazolan network and also the members from the uh, Global Soil Laboratory Network, Global Solan members. We have gathered today in this technical workshop, not just to learn, but also to exchange ideas and build connections across our borders in order to reach a standard and unified uh, management of our soils. We are very proud to be part of the organizing team. This is not just an academic uh, event. This is a good um, expression of the public uh, commitment and how we can walk towards a more sustainable future in our region. This is a strategic alliance around the commitment with our soils. This is critical for our nations, and this is also part of the global sustainability statement. And I'd like to quote President Boric, who talks about a, an ecologist, environmentalist government. We also have some eco-ministers who are very concerned about our resources, which are so relevant. The care for the soil is really critical for the SAG agency. This is the baseline for a fruitful and sustainable um, agriculture and cattle raising and to develop uh, sustainable food and also to sustain the lives of our plants and animals, which are part of our cycle. I'd like to focus and drive your attention to this project, which is going on in the Limari area. This is in the north of Chile, where there's been hard work in, in facing a very bad drought situation there because of not being able to care for our resources properly. So now we are paying the costs, the consequences, which have been very expensive. Let's talk about how the SAG contributes to the well-being of the rural communities and also the environmental health. This is one step ahead in this continuous and permanent uh, commitment to protecting our soils and all of the uh, activities around our soils, assuring a more green and fertile future for everyone. Through the assistance of the University of Concepcion, which is my uh, university where I uh, graduated from, uh, this is where I got my education in Chillán City, in the city of Chillán, where you will also be able to visit and enjoy the landscape and the nice views of Chillán. We would like to foster the promotion of sustainable practices around soil management with international collaboration. 
in kicking off this uh, workshop, my wish is for this workshop to become a good catalyst in the development and growth of this work and for it to be just the uh, first step in the uh, development of prosperity in Latin America and the Caribbean. I thank you so much for your commitment. We will work together towards the future, protecting our soil and giving it the proper care it deserves. Saltumai in Mapuche language. Have a nice day. Thank you. We would like to thank the National Director of the Livestock and Agriculture Service of Chile, SAD, and thank you to all of those attendees who have joined remotely. We have more than 200 people who have joined us today remotely. We would like now to offer the floor to the Dean of the Faculty of Agronomy at the University of Concepcion, Guillermo Mucada. Sir, thank you. Good morning. On behalf of the University of Concepcion and on behalf of the Faculty of Agronomy, I'd like to thank you and also acknowledge you for attending today. I'd like to especially greet all of the national authorities, also the international authorities who have attended and joined us. Also greet all of the delegations which are part of the uh, LATSOLAN network, including the 23 countries from Latin America and the Caribbean. Also agree and uh, uh, speak on behalf of Mr. Carlos Saavedra Rubilan, who is the uh, director of our university and who wasn't able to attend, unfortunately, this morning. On behalf of the University of Concepcion and the Faculty of Agronomy, uh, we are very proud of the uh, laboratories that we have set up. And after 45 years of experience, our laboratory has become one of the top laboratories across the country. Our main area of servicing is the agricultural area, where we provide certification services to farmers and consultants. We also work in the uh, recovery of degraded soils with the support of the SAT uh, Institute and INDAP Institute as well. Apart from uh, participating in the development of uh, knowledge and growth through a number of both international and local uh, projects, and also um, participating with our graduated students and postgraduate students, the Laboratory of Soils of the University has and will always be uh, linked to the public and private sector and also linked to the academia. Since year 2018 and in coordination with the World Alliance on Soil and also um, uh, working together with the SAG, our laboratory has been working in Chile and has been in contact uh, for a long time with Glow Solan Laboratory, developing a number of methodologies and, and working, um, supporting a number of uh, initiatives proposed by Glow Solan. We have participated in a number of international and local laboratory rounds, being able to assess the analytical capabilities of our laboratories in charge of the soil analysis. Uh, just lately, and and the framework of the national network, RINA Lat, um, our laboratory has been leading the advisory committee and has worked as a consulting entity to provide services to this network. This committee includes the National Society of Soil Sciences, also the Accreditation Society, and a number of laboratories from the north and south of our country plus one collaborator party from the Lapsalan network. This is the international contribution and the support we have received from the international organization. Our chemical 
analysis laboratory has been gathering forces with the physics and microbiology laboratory of our faculty as well. These are two separate laboratories and with a very long standing trajectory. We have been working as a multidisciplinary consolidated team aiming at addressing the soil analysis from different perspectives, from different point of views. This work together will help us continue to lead initiatives such as the one we are kicking off today, along with a number of other associations such as AMS and Close Sulan. On the 3rd of August 22, we did the official launching of the Chilean uh, Laboratories Network, and that time we did an interlaboratory round addressing different uh, specificities of soil analysis, including a number of methodologies in our country with the collaboration of GLOSOLAN. After the first meeting of the RENALAT, by the end of November 23, and acknowledging the work performed by Maria de Los Angeles, Sepulveda, my colleague and the head of our soil laboratory, also the contribution of the scholar Dr. Eric Sagal. We now be a president uh, and the vice president of the National Rina Latch Network. Maria de Los Angeles has been uh, chairing this association, this network of soil laboratories in Latin America and the Caribbean as well. Um, and has been working along with FAO and SAD, and they are now organizing the next, uh, this actual uh, workshop that we are holding today. After 105 years of experience and working in the uh, Faculty of Agronomy, we have decided to embark upon this project with much uh, responsibility and dedication as well, always contributing to scientific knowledge and providing all of the necessary tools for sustainable management of our natural resources. I would like to thank again FAO, um, Losulan, Nesalan, and SAG, also Latsalan, for all of the uh, trust you have uh, put on us. And we expect that this will be a fruitful time for the exchange of ideas, talking about new points of views and consolidation of collaboration among our different countries to further foster the development of uh, research work in this vital area for our societies. We wish you most success in all of your activities this week and we hope that this encounter will uh, uh, help you strengthen the bonds among the different members of uh, Latsalan. We will be expecting you in Tian with open arms. You will visit a nice city, a great campus of our university, University of Concepcion. You will really enjoy the trip. Enjoy these two days of workshop today and tomorrow and the best for all of you. Thank you so much for listening. Agradecemos al señor Guillermo Wells. Y a continuación, el señor Lifen Lee, director de la División Thank de Tierra. Thank you. Now we will hear from the Director of Land and Water Division at FAO, Mr. Lifen Lee. Uh, he will connect virtually to group participants and explain the full background of this event. Excellency FAO ADG, Regional Representative for Latin America and the Caribbean the Director of, for Agriculture and the Livestock Service, and also Excellency, the Rector for the University of uh, Concepcion. Distinguished guests, dear colleagues, I'm very honored to participate in this workshop, focused on enhancing quality measurement confidence for Latin American soil laboratories. According to FAO report, the state of food security and nutrition in the world released in July of the last year, there will be still about 735 million people around the world facing hunger in 2022. Looking ahead by 2030, probably we will have 670 million people would still live in hunger. That is not acceptable. Therefore, there is urgent need to restore and maintain soil health. 
so that the soils can produce more nutritious food for Earth on a sustainable basis. Lacking accurate soil analysis will not be able to effectively manage our soils for food security and climate change mitigation. Our aim is to enhance nations to generate high quality soil data and information serving as the foundation for building soil information systems. As a UN specialized agency, FAO established the Global Soil Laboratory Network GLOSALAN, in 2017 within the Global Soil Partnership Framework, uniting soil laboratories globally through capacity building, quality control, and harmonization. Thanks to our dedicated members, GLOSALAN now boasts over 150 labs from over 170 countries. In this framework, Latin American Soil Laboratory Network Lot Solan was also launched in 2018 with the aim to improve the analytical capacity of soil laboratories in this region. In the coming days, the participants will have the opportunity to be trained by the leading expert on soil analysis in multiple languages, making this training a milestone in improving the precision and accuracy of laboratories analytical works. This event is implemented as a regional component of the Soil for Project on Soil Mapping for Resilient Agri-Food Systems in Central American and Sub-Sahara Africa Soil Fair. The project aims to scale up the activities on capacity building, which will be implemented in countries involved in the region. I want to express gratitude to the colleagues from FAO Regional Office in Latin America and the Caribbean for their support in organizing the workshop, and also to our chilling partners and collaborators who helped to organize this event. Dear colleagues, soil is one indispensable natural resource to achieve the UN 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. It is the base for the transformation to a more efficient, inclusive, resilient, and sustainable agri-food systems. Together, let's enhance the analytical capacity of Latin American labs, refining our soil measurement for greater precision and accuracy, enabling us to more effectively safeguard soil fertility, biodiversity, and ecosystem services. Thank you very much for your attention and wish you a fruitful workshop. Agradecemos las palabras del señor Lifen Li, quien no quería estar ausente de esta. To Mr. Lifen Li. Now we will hear from Ms. Miriam Ostinelli from the Glossolan Steering Committee. She was the first president of the Latin American Network of Soil Laboratories, LATSOLAN, and of the global network, Glossolan. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of the steering committee of uh, Glossolan, our global soil laboratory network, which is uh, part of the Global Soil Partnership, NFAO. This is actually an initiative that was launched back in 2018 with the view to boost the sustainability of our soil. So on behalf of them, I would like to greet you all and thank you, primarily thank you for the commitment of the authorities in, in our dear Chile. And I say our because I feel uh, as though I am at home. Thank you, distinguished uh, minister, uh, dean of the university, uh, of the school, of the various schools involved. And I would like to thank all of the individuals from the University of Concepcion who have worked tirelessly to make this event take place. I know that we have been working with you since the very beginning of the launching of the Chilean uh, network of laboratories, and we have arduously 
made sure that what we do has been a success. That's why we, I, I have a first person experience that I know that Chile is successful when it sets out to do something. I would like to thank Maria de Los Angeles Sepulveda, uh, Eric as well, who has always been there behind the scenes. I would also like to thank Ms. Diana Londoño from Colombia, our uh, vice president of Latsolan. I would also like to thank all of my dear colleagues present here today from the various countries throughout Latin America and the Caribbean. Thank you for joining us. Today is a celebratory day because back in 2000, since 2018, since the creation of La Solan, we have only been able to have two in-person events. We were all surprised by the pandemic. And finally, several years later, we have uh, joined <laughs> here again and we are able to see each other face to face we have been working on harmonizing protocols on boosting the quality of the results of analysis and of course other activities but the end all be all be all goal is to boost the quality of our soils because our soil is what actually allows us to remain uh, here on the planet earth and without soil we wouldn't have anything in the end because that's where life begins so again allow me to thank you all for joining us here for being here i am very pleased that we are all here in person together doing our best to make progress and uh, make improvements and have uh, uh, discussions because i am fully convinced that above and beyond certain paradigms that some of our latin american countries have embraced uh, i'm convinced that the only way to make progress is to do it together and uh, everyone needs to we all have something that we can contribute to the effort uh, whether you are a country with a wealth of resources or limited resources we can all uh, provide our contribution and this is what fao has always done and glossolan and Latsolan as well we have always put our best foot forward so i'm very pleased as i mentioned to be here i would also like to encourage you during this week to engage in a lively discussion in Qian. And by the way, I've been to Qian and it's beautiful. Everything you have heard is true. And I would, again, like to encourage you to actively engage in the discussion and take part in every possible activity to ask any question that might arise. We know that a fruitful discussion is the starting point for reaching conclusions that are beneficial to us all and that are beneficial for our soils. I know that this is, uh, this has been a great deal of hard work. There's been groundwork. Uh, we know that Rome was not built in a day. Sometimes you move forward, two steps forward, three steps backwards, but nonetheless, we continue moving forward. That is the approach uh, that we have adopted within Glossolan, Latsolan, the, the Global Soil Partnership, and at FAO. And I'm sure that most of you uh, have a similar thought process and perspective. And we have received significant support from the Chilean Soil Society from the very beginning as well. So thank you. I just wanted to make that clear. It's important to mention that organization. So welcome. Uh, and once again, I am very appreciative for this event, and I'm sure you will have a very fruitful event and we will see each other again on the final day of the workshop to address our conclusions thank you 
I would like to thank Miriam Ostinelli for her remarks. And now I would like to give the floor to Ms. Sol Ortiz Garcia, Chair of the Latin American Caribbean Soil Partners. She will be joining us virtually as well on uh, behalf of the Latin American Caribbean Soil Partnership. So a uh, warm round of applause for her. Thank you and good morning. I hope you can hear me well. I wanted to extend you a warm greeting that is to all of you who are joining us either virtually or in person. Welcome to this very important workshop of the Latin American Soil Laboratory Network. As uh, president of the Latin American and Caribbean Soil Partnership, I would like to thank the organizers of this event, LATSOLAN, uh, FAO, and others. Thank you for organizing this in-person event. We were looking forward to this, and it is so necessary after having a long, list of virtual events. I would like to thank Mr. Esteban Valenzuela, the Minister of Agriculture, and uh, Mr. Jose Guajardo, the Director of the Agricultural and Livestock Service of Chile, Mr. Guillermo Wells as well, the Dean of the University of Concepcion's uh, Agronomy School, and everyone else, because and, and Chile as a whole, Chile has uh, put forward a great deal of efforts to secure the uh, improvement of soils in Chile and in Latin America. Chile already has a national uh, laboratory network, and we are very pleased that Chile is sharing its experience and infrastructure with us all, as well as the valuable human resources who will be receiving uh, all of the Latsolan members in Chile. I would also like to greet the 23 country representatives present here at this workshop. I trust that your enthusiasm and commitment to this workshop of the LATSOLAN entitled Pathways to Accuracy in Soil Testing, Progress of Soil Laboratories in Latin America and the Caribbean will result in very fruitful outcomes. I am fully sure that you will meet your objectives, which include uh, caring, uh, sharing learned uh, lessons learned and best practices and talking about how to best cover the laboratory needs and the needs of the laboratory users and other objectives. You will also be addressing different technical aspects of soil analyses. We know that this is only possible with a, an in-person meeting. I would have truly enjoyed being there as well with you because uh, I know this is a valuable moment. So without further ado, I would like to wish you a very successful event so that we may continue strengthening the collaboration among all of the various countries throughout the region. So kudos and thank you for your attention. Thank you to Ms. Sol Ortiz, who is joining us virtually. And I, the minister needs to move on with different events. So we will be taking a very brief break and also ask that all the uh, authorities come up to the uh, stage for a photograph. Don Alexis, nuestro subdirector de operaciones también, por favor. Alexis, please, you're also welcome to this picture. Y nuestros cámaras les pido que nos ayuden con la organización. Más adelante, más adelante. Ahí sí. ¿Estamos? Ahí sí. Agradecemos entonces a nuestras autoridades. 
Thank you so much, dear authorities. We also thank very much the minister for attending and we'll let you go so you can continue with today's, your personal agenda today. Los invito a tomar asiento para continuar con este Thank taller. Thank you so much. Please be seated so we can proceed with our workshop. And now we will offer the floor to Filippo Benedetti, who will be addressing this event's program. Dear Minister, Dean, ladies, gentlemen, Y puede ser un I'm un poquito... very happy to be here, and I'm really, uh, y en fin, por en fin, I'm really pandemia. happy to see you all here, and most above all, to have us all here in person. It's been uh, such a long time uh, since we last met, and it's so great to see you all gathering on behalf of our soils with the Caribbean laboratories, Central America, South America laboratories, everyone together in the same, at the same place. Our network has grown very much, and I am so thankful to all of its members for participating. We see that this is a mutual uh, sharing among the different laboratories. There's much exchange, um, many exchange activities going on. We would like to thank Mrs. Birch, who unfortunately wasn't able to, to come today. Also thank our colleagues from the Latin American and the Caribbean FAO meeting, uh, Javiera and the rest of the team, also our friends in Chile. Thank you for your commitment for organizing this event. Thank you so much, Mario, uh, Rodrigo. As you know, tomorrow we will be uh, working in Chiyan, we will be traveling tonight, and we will have our uh, technical sessions as of tomorrow in Chiyan. We will address quality control, which is the main uh, topic of the Latsalan Net, where we will talk about internal controls and many other topics, such as the soil biological um, assessment, spectroscopy, and physical analysis will be also two of the main topics of discussion tomorrow, mainly. Today, we will mainly talk about FAO's activities in our region and also what um, the uh, Global Soil Partnership has been uh, doing from Rome. And also we will hear about what the uh, Latin American and especially the Chilean laboratories have been doing. We have our colleagues from the Rina Lash, the Chilean uh, Association, uh, network of, of laboratories. We know that we have many people participating and we would like to offer the floor to each one of them, each one of you, so you can uh, let us know who you are and what you're doing. Of course, we're gathering today for a common objective and we would like to hear from your views, obviously. I expect that this will, I hope that this will be a very fruitful experience for everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for attending. And I hope that we can continue to progress. And this is the spirit of Glow Salan, also the spirit of Lat Salan. Everyone, every member in those two networks has a, a shared a common view. And well, let's continue to drive forward uh, with this initiative. In, in Chile and Latin America. Thank you so much. All the participants from uh, the local networks, we will have soon a, a brief pause, and then we will uh, address different topics such as the soils in our region, and then we will offer the floor, floor to our Chilean experts, laboratory experts, to have a an open discussion later on. Thank you. Thank you so much, Filippo, so much for your uh, participation. He is here on behalf of the uh, Secretariat in Rome. I'd like to uh, invite you all now to a short coffee break. Thank you.
I am, I am. Estoy, estoy. Guevara, funcionaria de la Oficina Regional de la FAO, y presentará los principales proyectos. From the uh, FAO National Office, we will uh, address the different activities, projects, and different focuses at a regional level. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much to the uh, Secretary of Agriculture, the Ministry, also the SAG, the University of Concepcion, for hosting this important activity. Unfortunately, the minister has left. I have a proposal for him, so I will probably talk to his representatives to discuss about uh, precise, accurate data of the uh, previous uh, headlines uh, regarding the quality of soil and other ecosystem uh, services addressed by the Italian laboratory. I'd like to propose uh, a different title for the uh, laboratory workshop. Maybe soon we can have um, a workshop of that kind. Let me talk about the different initiatives that we've been uh, offering here from FAO and our partners in the region. In starting, I'd like to provide you with a global perspective, and then we can bring uh, things down to earth a little bit. First of all, uh, from the point of view of our schedule, FAO today is working on four main improvements, better production, better nutrition, better life, better environment. Each one of these improvements has uh, a specific action plan and KPIs. In the particular case of our own, we here are working with the better production area, which is uh, what involves the soil quality, and there is much interaction regarding uh, the improvement of uh, a better environment. Also, if we uh, focus on this slide, when we hear talk about a better production, this mainly refers to seeking for uh, sustainable consumption and production patterns, aiming for actions which are more resilient and sustainable throughout time in the framework of the practices and the environmental context, depending on the different scenarios. On the right-hand side, there is an explanation regarding agriculture sustainability, which uh, takes us to uh, a higher level of productivity and for the safety at the same time, as it fosters uh, healthy ecosystems and manages and favors the better and sustainable management of natural resources. Um, basically, uh, at a, a lower scale and the different ecosystems and services related to agriculture. Better production should be connected to better environment. So in that quote, we see that part of our plan addresses the um, development of policies, uh, practices of agriculture, which are intelligent to mitigate the climate change, but also to build resilience in the rural communities. Also, we are working together. Uh, I mean, we are working, developing all four areas of development, but with a special focus on better production and better environment. We cannot have a better production if the environment is being negatively impacted. And we want to develop ecosystem services also for a better agricultural production. Now, in terms of the different areas, uh, priority areas, how are those uh, improvements uh, deployed? In terms of the better production, there are five main topics. One of them is related to production innovation for sustainable agricultural production. In the realm of FAO, whenever we hear talk about agriculture, this involves agriculture, 
livestock and forestry. All three areas are the three stools, uh, legs of our stool. And we also include here the so-called blue transformation, which involves fishing and aquaculture. There is a third area of uh, our work, which deals with a single health care, which involves the different uh, sectors. It's a cross-cutting uh, effort, including uh, safety, quality, and not just in the food we consume, but also regarding the physical productive ecosystem, which is also part of our productive activities. We also have equitable access from uh, of the agricultures, uh, agricultures to uh, the different resources. This involves financial and technical support, also innovation and digital agriculture. This is regarding mainly innovation. If we now focus on a better environment, the main uh, areas of development are rather linked to the adaptation to climate change, mitigation of climate change, biodiversity, micro bioeconomy, and the biodiversity and uh, services for the uh, food and agriculture ecosystems. This is how we link the environment with the production area. So this is very much what we do. And part of the FAO work involves the mandate that FAO has received from the different countries through their ministries of agriculture. We have just held our regional conference back in March. And during the regional conference, we uh, received a mandate on three main topics. First of all, uh, the regional priority number three, this is part of the report issued by the original conference, which deals with sustainable management of natural resources and adaptation to climate change. Conference has uh, focused on uh, the importance of uh, supporting and fostering sustainable use and preservation of biodiversity, as well as the uh, restoration of ecosystem services, such as soil and water. The soil is identified as one of the top priorities identified by the ministries of agriculture across the region. The soil topic used to be uh, less visible. It now has become uh, a priority, and this is giving us um, a special focus now, a special drive towards this important topic. So now we will talk about the projects. So I was talking about the programmatic area, and then I've moved down to the policy area related to the ministerial mandate. So now let's talk about what we do in the practice. So essentially, we are a technical uh, assistance body, and technical assistance is uh, provided by way of the public policy frameworks, in other words, through regulations, laws, regulations related to soil management aspects, but also through projects. And with regard to the project framework, our main approach is productive restoration. In other words, how can soil, water, and other ecosystem management practices be shaped to lead to conservation, restoration, etc. And then within the project framework, we have soil care, soil fair, and the uh, soil doctors program as well, specifically through the Jeff. And then we also have technical cooperation that has led to excellent outcomes and implementation of the soil management protocol as well. So other countries have implemented that. And then we have eight experiences that have enabled us to actually say that the protocol is implemented as such, and these are the results, and this may take this uh, time frame, so on and so forth. So generally speaking, this is how we have been carrying out our activities through public policy frameworks and also through the project framework. That's essentially what we have. We have soil care, soil fair, the soil doctors program, and the soil sustainable management protocol. 
Next slide. We also have information and knowledge within that area. We also uh, build capacity, hold workshops, webinars, such, and other workshops such as this one. And that has led us to create this community of practitioners, which has allowed us to share with our partners, to co-create, and to have roughly a network of 700 members. So this is a partnership, essentially involving members from FAO. I think we are actually the minority. We are one of the facility, facilitators of the community of practitioners. And through this community, we've been able to work in Mesoamerica, the Caribbean region, other areas throughout South America. And then we have the technical documents as yet another aspect of knowledge and management. Next slide, please. How did we reach this knowledge management, knowledge information area? Well, it's been a, a process. We started with the crisis, fertilizer crisis. That allowed us to talk about biofertilizers and other technologies. Now, the point was, how could we move from that crisis to better position the fertilizer component within other sectors such as nutrition indicators, vegetable nutrition, plant nutrition, uh, soil management. So we included the fertilizer aspect into those different concepts. And we weren't the only ones out there uh, working in this area. So we realized we needed to join forces with others through the community of practitioners. Now, this community of practitioners has made it possible for us to know what's going on and learn more from others and to know who's actually involved in the subject matter and to provide more visibility to the Latin American and Caribbean soil partnership and to better position this, this body as well and to uh, form partnerships with other communities of practitioners, for example, those in Africa. This has also led us to draft technical documents that have enabled us to summarize and simplify the information in order to make it easier to digest, because it's not always that easy to digest. So we have done our best to simplify the information, and now I will provide you with some examples. Next slide, please. This is one of the summarized products that we have worked on with the community of practitioners with regard to biofertilizers. Now, here we have done our best to uh, summarize the key messages through images and uh, illustrations and not just text so that one can learn from this knowledge, this information. So the purpose here is to summarize the concept of biofertilizers. But you can see at the core of all of this, we have soil. Soil is key uh, for the good use of biofertilizers. You have other indicators as well. For example, physical, chemical, uh, biological components in the soil, uh, compost, etc. This has allowed us to tie in soil to the biofertilizer concept as well. Here we have an image of the community of practitioners uh, addressing soil. We have the main focal point here as well, Javiera, and she can uh, work with you if you have any questions. And through this community of soil practitioners, as I mentioned, we have held webinars, discussions, and we have also tried to bring in different topics. For example, how pesticides uh, result, are, are tied to soil management. We have also, as I mentioned, involved other topics such as the impact of fires on soil quality. We, this has involved different technical discussions. And we have also included contests with regard to good practices. This has resulted in a catalog of more than 30 practices carried out throughout the region, uh, practices from Africa as well. And we forged a partnership as well 
with the Climate Action Platform. So these are some of the collective efforts that we have been carrying out with the communities. This is, our, this is another example of the uh, summaries of the webinars that we have carried out. We held three different webinars and we addressed three different topics at each one. For example, recommendations with regard to sustainable soil management, the importance of uh, taking care of our souls, soils, excuse me. This is, these are very simple illustrations that focus on the key messages that can be used by any type of audience. This is another example, and this is related to the sustainable soil management protocol. On the right, you see the soil doctors as an example of one of the initiatives to improve soil quality. And then we have um, information on recarbonization, uh, the efforts of La Solan, etc. Hopefully this workshop today will be the starting point of other efforts that we will be carrying out with the community of practitioners. And this is something important for you to know so that you can share this with the school communities, etc. And this is related to the Soil Doctors Program, and the community practitioners was very much interested in learning more about this. So we held a meeting just specifically aimed at talking about the Soil Doctors Program. Here we addressed who, what, when, where, etc. And we have consolidated all the information in one specific place. And this is in keeping with requests by the uh, members of the community of practitioners. Next slide, please. This is a summary related to forest fires. I learned a great deal during this specific event because one tends to talk about the other types of biodiversity that is lost during a forest fire, but no one really refers to soil. So it's important to focus on uh, how nutrients are affected, and we know that uh, scrub burning and slash and burn agriculture are two practices that have uh, been quite important in our region. And of course they have an impact and it's necessary to know that this is not necessarily positive. And then here I have some information on, uh, we have some policy guidelines. This is helpful for the ministries of agriculture and the other players who may have an impact on the soil agenda in our country. So this uh, document includes recommendations and opportunities for decision makers. Next slide, please. New topics. Now we are trying to address the pollutants aspect that is related to pesticides and uh, heavy metals, which clearly have a significant impact on soils. Um, the mining sector, for example, uh, is a key player here. We have to be able to measure these components. And we're also trying to uh, manage plastics as yet another pollutant in our soils. So now we have an agenda today that we are addressing from the soy perspective. And I have a question for you. What other topics, what other opportunities do you think that we can work on from the laboratory perspective? What else can we do? Let's take full advantage of your community of practitioners available to you. And uh, through this community, we uh, could develop different activities and gather and uh, disclose and disseminate knowledge uh, related to uh, soil quality indicators. So this is an open question to all of you. And thank you. Thank you, Ana Posas, for your presentation. 
Now, in order to address the various projects underway throughout the region, we will hear from Carolina Oliveira, who will talk about the main projects launched by the uh, Global Soil Partnership within our region. Desde Roma, eh, tuve la suerte de participar en Greetings from Rome. Fortunately, I was able to take part in the first workshop held in Texcoco, and I know many of you, so I would like to greet Rodrigo Sorio, our focal point in Chile, special greetings to Maria de los Angeles and Miriam as well, and uh, my uh, true appreciation to Ana Bosas as well for all the work that she has carried out from within, for the, for the partnership from within the regional office. Let me begin with my presentation, but I would like to make a quick change to my agenda because I think that would be an easier way to segue between uh, what Ana Posos mentioned and what Xingdong will be presenting. I apologize. I need to share my screen. One moment, please. Entonces, lo que yo les quiero presentar en este espacio, muchísimas eh, gracias. Me, please, oh, first of all, thank you. Thank you so much for allowing me to speak today in front of you. And let me start sharing with you what is our function from the soil, global soil partnership, in particular in the area of Latin America and the Caribbean. We do coordination work among the different partners in Glossal Land, and also we make a connection between Glossal Land and the FAO offices in Rome. Also, the laboratories in this network are partners in the Global Soil Partnership, and we work together with them. I am a facilitator between the uh, among the six regions, I am in charge of the Latin American, the Caribbean region, and I take care of the governance process. I work as an enabler to connect all different actors and members in this alliance. Let me explain which is the function that each one plays in this uh, network and how the laboratories may as well be part of this. You heard from Ana, Ana Posas, um, when she talked about how key interaction with the regional office is, since the regional office is the coordinator and the main counterpart at the region. As you heard her say, it is important to uh, address the soil topic and the different soil laboratories um, are playing as well a very important role when it comes to interaction with the FAO and the different members of this uh, network. The support from the regional office is critical to provide the necessary focus and relevance to the soil in the different uh, FAO projects that are developed and deployed across the region from the ASLAC Alliance and the uh, World Soil Partnership. We well, by the way, this is a very practical um, presentation for you to understand the governance at ASLAC and at the Soil um, Global Partnership. You know that we are organized in a global alliance, the regional partnerships, and then as the local level, the national alliances. There is contact with a focal point and there is also articulation with other alliances in the uh, global uh, or global uh, network. This is the role that I particularly play. I am an enabler, a facilitator, a connection with the regional alliance. As Ana Posas has discussed already in her presentation, um, and by the way, Yo Shington will as well talk about this, and Sol Ortiz, who is the chairman of the Alliance, will also present um, part of this. But let me just uh, briefly share with you the different activities in which ASLAC is participating in this region. 
Anna has talked about soil fur, which is the project uh, in charge of strengthening soil fertility data and to facilitate the management of soil fertility as well. Soil care is another project which involves soil management in the Caribbean in eight uh, um, Anglo-Saxon uh, islands there, uh, English-speaking islands. This is the Car Solan Network. This is the Caribbean laborat soil laboratory network. We also work with the PCT, which are the regional projects. Some of these projects um, have been also supported by the FAO regional office and has uh, allowed us to make much progress when it comes to soil data and the sustainable management protocols and how those protocols should be implemented and how articulation occurs among the different laboratories when it comes to keeping track of the different KPIs proposed by the partnership. We also see several voluntary members here, and there is a big support by the Global uh, Alliance and also the regional office. We also participate in the creation of GEF projects. In the GEF projects, this includes climate change, biodiversity, and other topics. Much of those or many of those GEF projects include a soil component. And what we do is to provide support from the FAO office or else from the uh, focal points in the soil global partnership. We are um, at this point participating in several of these GEF projects in the Caribbean, Bolivia, the Dominican Republic, Honduras, among others. We provide support to the soil component in these projects. This is what we do. And we also have um, the uh, climate green bond participation. There is a decarbonization of soil project which has been uh, uh, developed in Mexico and we are so participating there too with the soil component in that project in Mexico. As Ana Posas also mentioned, we have a COP, a community of practice, and we participate there by providing information to the different uh, countries. We allow for information exchange among the different member countries through this great tool that the regional office has uh, provided us with. And as Anna also mentioned, I don't want to repeat, but there are a number of webinars and workshops which are available for anyone to, to join, to participate at the regional office and also at the ASLAC level. So these are some of the many activities ASLAC is also uh, developing and there is a soil focus in most of those activities. In order to provide uh, a reliable participation, we are constantly appointing resources, we're constantly giving access to standardized data which are obtained on a reliable uh, basis. So this is what we mostly do when it comes to the uh, organization of projects. Now, if we go to the next level and the AMS and the governance uh, of, of this uh, partnership, this always focuses on, first of all, the national soil partnerships. This is something important for the soil laboratories to, laboratories to take into consideration. There are many uh, laboratories at Blow Solan which already have become part of their own national network of uh, laboratories, such as the uh, Rinalash, for instance, the uh, network in Nicaragua, uh, 
they also have a great laboratory network out there in, in that country. But for all of these local laboratory networks to connect with each other and connect with our counterparts, we promote the development of uh, national soil development partnerships in uh, connection with the governments and also in connection with the different uh, institutions who are in charge of keeping track of soil data, as well as uh, livestock and agriculture uh, entities that are also part of this network, we foster the creation of these national alliances. In this way, we will be better at providing uh, the necessary support and a better management, more efficient management of the actual uh, use of soil information. But also we will be better at meeting the needs of the different laboratories in every region with a proper use of the soil data that are normally fed, inputted by the different entities, including ministries, associations, etc. This here is uh, the National Soil Alliance, and we want to uh, promote this. Unfortunately, this is only in English, but we will definitely update this for you to have a better understanding of it. There is uh, a National Soil Alliance in Mexico. This is a very great example. The uh, Mexican uh, partnership is building its strategy we will not touch upon um, the specific local alliances. However, we have Sol Ortiz, who is the main uh, focal point at Mexico, apart from being the actual uh, chairwoman of this alliance. But this is uh, critical in order to gather accurate data. Normally, we uh, enable the communication back and forth between among the different actors. However, it's better and we are more efficient when each country is able to organize and articulate their own partnerships, alliances, and entities who are found locally. And this uh, helps expediting uh, the better and, and, and most accurate data available in each local country. So um, we should uh, definitely have a focal point contact. And in every country, we also have these focal points that you can contact. You can also contact me. I am the facilitator across the region. So you can contact me and I can put you in contact with each country's uh, focal points, which may change every now and then in every country, depending on who is uh, in the administration uh, every now and then. So those fo focal points may change. If you want to have access to the uh, most updated information, please don't hesitate to contact me and I will put you in contact with those new or recently appointed uh, focal points. There is also a network of partners. Maybe the laboratories are not necessarily in contact with them. However, we also keep a long list of partners from universities, associations of farmers, soil administrators who are also interested in the uh, sustainable management of soil. And our role is also to put you in contact with those members which do not appear on this list, of course, because of privacy policies, but we can put you in contact with any of them in case you need to. So you can contact me or someone at the uh, partnerships uh, secretariat. Our role is also to promote uh, the connection and to have a comprehensive management, including involving each and every soil uh, actor. We also work in collaboration with uh, FAO and also in collaboration with the United Nations system in general. Each UN, when I say UN system, I refer to each of the United Nations Environmental Convention entities. So we collaborate here with 
both the regional and national FAO offices. And as Anna has said, we work together with projects which are currently being developed. And this has been a quite successful uh, work so far. We have undertaken certain pilot work and we have considered uh, implementing the sustainable management of soil plan across the region. We, uh, for instance, want to know which are the, uh, or how the different ecologic activities are making an impact. And the way to, to, to check for that is by applying the protocols, which already have been harmonized at Low Solan with your assistant, including uh, apparent density, organic carbon content of soil, biodiversity, among others. In uh, FAO, we also have projects that Anna was referring to. There are other activities which are also part of our collaborative work, such as the purchasing of fertilizers. This is an interesting uh, activity where the laboratory, the soil laboratories may as well participate. It is highly recommended to purchase fertilizers using um, soil analysis and that type of work is really important. There is a high uh, potential here for collaboration when it comes to purchasing fertilizers. We can also refer you to the list of laboratories who are participating and collaborating in this network. As we said earlier, it's very important to uh, strengthen soil data in order to have more informed decisions so that we may work in a more coordinated fashion regarding soil fertilization. For example, soil, soil fair is a good example. Another example are the reports to the UN conventions. We have three environmental conventions, for example, the climate change convention, the Soil Degradation Convention and the Biodiversity Convention. Now, with regard to these three conventions, soils play a key role. In other words, for example, with regard to the Climate Change Convention and the uh, Desertification Convention, organic carbon is one of the most important indicators. It's increasingly more relevant and it's very well recognized under the uh, convention related to uh, countering desertification. We see that the role of uh, organic carbon uh, it, relative to soil is increasingly more important. With regard to the Biodiversity Convention, you know that we are increasingly defining biological parameters. Many of you have been providing us with support for the biological biological methodologies. And we have also proposed at uh, Montreal at the last uh, Global Biodiversity Monitoring Summit that we include soil. And so many of us are working on biodiversity topics. All of these parameters involve soil. And so uh, let's quickly go through this. We have, as Anna mentioned, uh, organized a variety of different net web webinars uh, related to the uh, World Soil Partnership, the Global Soil Partnership. We have the REC Soil Program, the Soil Doctors Program, and all the technical networks uh, uh, that have been set up. You can see them on the list, INSII, INBS, pollutants as well. As Anna mentioned, we have an increasing number of activities related to better controlling and monitoring pollutants in soils. Several countries, in fact, given greater awareness relative to soil pollutants, have been working on that. In fact, we have already developed some new posters relative to soil pollutants for the Soil Doctors Program. And we have received support from the volunteers making up the World Partnership. I just wanted to express, again, my uh, willingness to work with you and support you, and I'm very appreciative of your attention. 
and I wish you a very fruitful workshop. I am available in the event of questions or requests. Thank you, Carolina, for joining us from Rome. Now we will hear, uh, we will receive an update on the Global Alliance for Soils, and we will hear from Yu Ching Tong from Rome. Uh, hello, colleagues. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. Let me share my screen. Uh, good, good morning, colleagues in Chile and uh, partners, members of Globe, uh, La, uh, Latin America Soil Laboratory Network. Uh, good morning. It's my honor to be here to uh, introduce Global Soil Partnership Action Framework and the Relevant Activities Plan. So my name is Yu Xin Tong. I'm Land Water Officer at Land Water Division and Glo uh, Secretary of uh, Global Soil Partnership. So I would like to introduce uh, activities, action plans of Global Soil Partnership. So the Global Soil Partnership was established by IFAO Council in 2012. And uh, in order to, the uh, mechanism of Global South Partnership is to develop a strong partnership and enhance collaboration between all stakeholders. And the objective of Global South Partnership is to improve soil governance and promote sustainable soil management. So till now, there are 100 64 countries officially joined the Global South Partnership and we involved 500 partners worldwide. We established seven regional partnerships and four sub-regional partnerships. We also support country to establish 14 national South partnerships. So here are the general information for you uh, about the Global South Partnership. Last year, uh, we, together with the members and the partners, uh, developed action frameworks of the Global South Partnership in the next 10 years. So I will going to introduce action area one by one. So the first action area of Global South Partnership for the next two, 10 years is assess, map, and monitor soil health in a harmonized way. Under their, this area, we have activities and networks such as the International Network of Soil Information Institutions, Global Soil Information System, Global Soil Data Platform, Global Soil Laboratory Network, which is our topic today and in this workshop. So, Firstly, I briefly introduced the Global Soil Laboratory Network, and this network was established in 2017. And now there are 1,050 laboratories officially registered in this network. And we also have six regional soil laboratory networks, including the Latin American uh, Soil Laboratory, Regional Soil Laboratory Network. We also support countries to establish their national soil laboratory network. So the main area of global, line, global soil laboratory network include standard operating procedure development, quality assurance, quality control. Number three, capacity building, including trainings and provider equipment. For example, we are organizing this workshop to train uh, laboratory technicians from Latin America. And number four is the promoting of new technology, for example, drug chemistry, uh, which is soil spectroscopy. Uh, we also have the global information system and we support countries to mapping their soils. We are using the country-driven methodology to develop a global map. So we empower countries, we organize trainings 
uh, to my purse, to uh, information expertise experts to build their national soil maps. Then we integrated our national map to a global map. So we are following a country driven map. We support countries to build their capacity on soil mapping. So till now, we already launched the four soil maps, which are global soil organic carbon map, soil organic carbon sequestration map, soil, uh, soil, uh, soil salinity map, and the black soil map. So we are also we are we are developing another two maps, which is the global soil erosion map and the global soil nutrient budget map. Uh, the number two action error is manage sustainable, sustainability and restore soils for the provision of ecosystem services. So under this action area, we have REC Soil Global Recarbonization Initiative. We have global soil management practices, uh, sustainable soil management protocol, a very important initiative under this action area is recarbonization initiative. So we're supporting countries to restore, to store organic carbons in their country to reduce greenhouse gas emission, boosting soil health and other co-benefits, for example, ecosystem services. So we developed a holistic approach to support countries, uh, partners to store their carbon. Number three action area is promote knowledge and the literacy on soil use. So we want to train farmers, we want to reach all relevant stakeholders to promote sustainable soil management. So under this action area, we have Global Soil Doctor Program, Ideal Soil Platform, and the Capacity Building Initiatives. So, I, so uh, under this action area, the Global Soil Doctor Program is a very successful uh, initiative. Uh, we want to train farmers uh, to the champion farmers through the promoters in the member countries and therefore to reach farmers uh, to promote sustainable soil management. I think uh, Carolina already mentioned this successful initiative. So we will we would like to work with our members, partners to uh, really improve the capacity of farmers to promote soil management. Number four action area is about foster technical cooperation. So we established several networks, for example, the International Network of Black Soils, International Network of South of Black Soils, uh, Global Information, uh, uh, soil, International Network on Soil Biodiversity, uh, Soil Pollution, and the Soil Fertility and the Fertilizers. So we're targeting different soil types and different soil uh, thrice to basically work with the member countries to solve the problem and promote soil health, targeting different topics. So under those te technical networks, we are going to promote exchange of experiences, technologies, and the knowledge. Secondly, develop knowledge products, technical guidance, and the methodologies. We also address knowledge gaps and promote solutions targeted at global, regional, and national level, targeting different products. So we developed and published uh, several reports targeting different soil threats and different soil types. Number five action area is strengthen soil governance. So FAO is a very unique platform to address soil policy at the global level and the national level. So under this action area, we have SoilLex platform. We developed and published the World Soil Chapter, water, uh, Voluntary Guidelines on Sustainable Soil Management, and the International Code of Conduct for the Sustainable Use and the Management of Fertilizers. Those publications also provide guidance on soil regulations and uh, soil policies. We established this soil like platform uh, on, on our global in global soil partnership 
we conducted a global assessment about uh, soil legislation. Unfortunately, at the global level, only 17 countries have a uh, systematic national regulation. So it means 90% of member countries of United Nations don't have soil, national soil regulation and laws. So we collected uh, all relevant soil regulations and the policies and the laws and uh, summarized them uh, in, on our website. So it's free for, for all uh, partners and the member countries to download those information and could apply, uh, to support countries to develop their own national regulations and laws. Number six, action error, promote awareness, raising and uh, uh, the advocacy on soil health. So uh, IFAO is also very important platform to raise awareness on soil health and put soil on global agenda. So we organize World Soil Day every year on 5th December to celebrate soils at the global level, national level. We also publish uh, Global Soil Partnership newsletters per monthly, uh, monthly. And we also uh, uh, organize the social media websites. And very important, we organize global symposium on different soil topics every year. So this year, we will organize Global Symposium on Soil Information and Data uh, on 25th to 28th September. So uh, we warmly welcome and invite all of you to the uh, to the to the symposium because this symposium is re is related to soil information data and want to uh, well explore and stock the role of comparable and reliable the data and the information in addressing global challenges such as food security, climate change, and sustainable agriculture management. We we have we we will have four themes, and very important. The first theme of the symposium will focus on the laboratory soil analysis, standardization, harmonization, and the communication. So we we think it's very highly it's highly relevant to the uh, topic uh, of this workshop and experts in this workshop. So we would like to invite you to attend this symposium as well. I put the link of the registration, um, online registration website here. So you can uh, uh, you can register it, uh, to attend this symposium. So in conclusion, Global Soil Partnership is working on six action areas. Firstly, assist, map, and monitor soil health in a harmonized way. Second, foster technical cooperation through networks. Number three, manage sustainably and restore soils for the provision of ecosystem service. service. Number four, promote knowledge and literacy on soils. Number five, strengthen soil governance. And the last one is promote awareness rising and advocacy on soil health. So this is what Global Soil Partnership is working on in, and will work in next 10 years. I would also take this opportunity to, uh, uh, to introduce a little bit about the soil for project. We, uh, uh, the title of this project is the soil mapping for resilient agri-food system in Central America and Sub-Sahara Africa. So this project uh, is about 30 million, uh, which funded by the United States, Department of State of the United States. And the uh, implementation uh, carried well from 2023 to 2027. And the software project, which funded by the United States will cover five uh, reception countries, including uh, countries in Latin America, Guatemala, Honduras, and the countries in Africa, uh, Zambia, Kenya, and Ghana. Uh, Japan government also uh, committed, committed to support the software project in another two countries in Africa, which are Tunis and uh, Mozambique. Okay, sorry. 
um, now I would like to introduce um, main activities of software project. Maybe you are interested about uh, the activities of this project. So firstly, we will support data collection and the data analysis uh, and capacity building relevant activities for the reception countries. For example, we will organize soil survey, harmonize collect and legacy data. We will support the soil laboratory to analyze soil samples. And we will support establish a national soil analytical database, uh, build national spatial laboratories and support countries to establish national soil information system and uh, support countries to do to, to develop a laboratory information management system. So this is the first uh, activity groups are uh, data collection and harmonization support country build the relevant capacity. And the second uh, and the second uh, actions are relevant to the soil information knowledge plat uh, capacity building and establish relevant tools and platforms. For example, we will support countries to establish national nutrient, uh, develop national nutrient uh, budget maps, support countries to develop uh, national soil property maps, uh, crop suitability maps, and the full, another established, fully established the national soil information systems, soil monitoring systems, and uh, very important the decision support tools for fertilizer recommendations and the sustainable soil management. After we have those tools and the platform, we want to reach farmers. We want to really recommend good practices to farmers, to relevant stakeholders, extension services, et cetera. Therefore, we will um, uh, provide the fertilizer decision support for farmers and the governments, uh, build a decision support, uh, support decision, decision for crop suitability as well. Uh, capacity building activities and outreach program will also be developed and we will also analyze eco uh, social, economic, financial, and the co-benefits of the fertilizer recommendation and the sustainable soil management. So in conclusion, we will support data collection harmonization. We will build platform uh, tools to, to recommend fertilizer recommendations and the sustainable soil management. And in the end, we want to reach farmers to organize the trainings to support the farmer to really build their capacity on sustainable soil management and the fertilizer recommendations. Thank you very much for your attention. And that's all from my side. And we are ready be here uh, to answer your questions, your questions, if any. Thank you very much. Over to you. Agradecemos al señor Yu Ching Tong por conectarse con nosotros desde... Thank you so much, Yu Ching Tong, for connecting with us from Rome. We would like to welcome the network of the Chilean laboratories. We will offer the floor to Rina Lunch, a representative, who will also make her speech. Good morning, and thank you so much for attending today. I'd like to uh, thank the Minister of Agriculture, also the authorities of our government, and also thank the steering committee of this event. In particular, let me thank Filippo Benedetti, Milian Ostinelli, Maria de Los Angeles Sepulveda, Diana Maria Delgado, Gloria Birch, Daniel Vidal, Jorge Chivers, who has the trajectory award of soil sciences, Rodrigo Osorio and Eric Sagal. Let me say that the Soil Sciences Association in Chile has been around for over 50 years. This is an academia association. And let me, by the way, thank everyone who has joined today on behalf of our association. I'd like to thank you all for your participation and in particular thank the uh, Latsolan Network of Laboratories. Our uh, network of laboratories is organized through the SAG's accreditation system. We have been able to 
characterize saline soils, acid soils in our country. And as per the minister's words, we are here to strengthen and contribute to the improvement of our soils through the so-called ESIGES program, which is a sustainable soil management program that our network has developed. This is helping us embrace and address the different challenges that we are facing. And I invite the other countries to address this issue of the soil biodiversity. Anna Posa was speaking of the fourth pillar, which is the biodiversity pillar. There are a, a number of soil qualities, chemically and biologically speaking. However, we have to move forward in terms of how we evaluate and assess those soils. And in Chile, there are a number of laboratories working in this accreditation process from SAG, along with the Soil Sciences Partnership in Chile. There is a permanent challenge here that we are facing when it comes to uh, improving the quality of our analysis. At the Ministry of the Environment as well, we have a team of people who is now in charge of developing the uh, primary regulation for Chilean soils. There is a standardization effort going on, which involves all of the laboratories present today who are discussing about the analytical capacity and the work each laboratory is performing. Chile is a particularly interesting country because of the very broad array of soils from the far north over to the far south in the desert over to the Patagonia going across our central valley with a um, mountain range with, with volcanoes and the ocean on the other side. This is particularly interesting when it comes to soil analysis. Let me greet the laboratories who are with us today. We are showing some uh, images of the INEA, the regional uh, laboratory center, the laboratory at the University of Concepcion in Chillán. Also, we have laboratories which are private laboratories in Osorno. This is in the south of Chile. And there is a list of 27 um, laboratories which are constantly receiving certification in chemical um, physical properties. And we will now become part of the CIGES program, which is to be deployed in Chile to address the biodiversity of soils. So our alliance has positioned in this uh, work in this in this world of, of uh, soil analysis. There are different uh, efforts such as the carbon contents analysis, but let us now focus for a while on biodiversity. We will be working in Chile. Chile is a soil made up of uh, mainly copper and wine. So welcome to the soil of copper and wine. Welcome everyone. In simple terms, this is our land. In the Central Valley and the south of our country, we have the so-called Mapuche culture. Our ancestors have been protecting their natural resources, the soil, the different elements, rain or water, the trees, the forests. So you will receive this um, small gift, which has uh, an image of the uh, Cordillera de los Andes with our volcanoes and this important instrument, musical instrument, which is the cultrún, which is the one used by the Mapuche people to uh, pay tribute to the earth. Thank you so much and welcome to Chile. Thank you so much, Yasna, for your invitation and your presentation. And let me now offer the floor to one of our presenters, Sol Ortiz, who will be addressing the LAC update. And then we have a Q&A session. We don't have questions, so there's no Q&A. Well, let's first of all offer the floor to Sol. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is Sol Ortiz uh, right now on the screen with her presentation. I'd like to greet all of my colleagues in Chile. I'm so glad to, to know and see you working together. 
Mr. Osorio, also Maria de los Angeles, Miriam, Carolina, Mrs. Posas, Filippo, and the rest of the team over there, especially uh, I greet Jorge Chavez from Mexico and Armando Correo, who is the chairman of the Mexican Network of Soil Laboratories. It's good that we have you there, uh, Doctor. I was uh, asked to present uh, the activities that our um, alliance, the ACE-LAC alliance is doing, and also the uh, AMS uh, alliance is doing. Let me, first of all, touch upon who the members are at the GSP, the Global Soil Partnership, and the specific uh, ACE-LAC, the Latin American and Caribbean Alliance. We have three main groups in our region, as you see them on the screen. They are uh, divided into the South American subgroup, which includes all those uh, Spanish-speaking countries. We have the subgroup from Mesoamerica, Mexico, and the Caribbean. And this includes Haiti, uh, because of the Spanish, uh, but we also have a bit of French in this uh, middle group. We also have the Caribbean subgroup, which mainly communicates in English. All of those countries mainly communicate in English. So this is basically the members of ACE-LAC, and we're happy that FAO has requested for our collaboration in different instances, such as this meeting. Regarding governance, the chair is Mexico today, and I am honored to be to chair the partnership for several years now. I work in the Mexican Secretariat of Agriculture and Rural Development, and I am in charge of uh, the General Office of Prospection Policies and Climate Change Policies along with my uh, teacher and uh, colleague. I am very happy to be taking part in these uh, activities and I'm fully committed to the soils of Mexico and the region. As mentioned by Mr. Rodrigo Osorio, I work, well, I work closely with him as well. And then Mr. Jose Villarreal from Panama is the vice chair of the Mesoamerican region, and Christian Linroy is the vice chair of the Caribbean office in Antigua and Barbuda. Now, we have been reflecting on some of the changes that we would like to roll out with regard to ASLEC's governance, and we would like for the regional uh, responsible parties uh, to be elected this year and we would like well we'd like for them to also uh, select new areas of work we have also proposed some changes in 2023 with regard to the re role of the regional office of fao and of the partners partners may be appointed as focal points as well the partners have been working closely with the organization as well. Now, during the 10th Regional Assembly of ASAC, which was held in June of last year, 25 countries took part in this event by way of their focal points, and there were 58 uh, in-person participants as well as 54 virtual participants. We identified uh, several regional priorities, for example, uh, soil information and data. This is uh, involves Latsolan, of course, another regional priority that we defined last year was uh, sustainable soil management governance, as well as actions aimed at uh, uh, reducing soil degradation. And two examples are the actions carried out by REC soil and the soil doctors. These two areas of action have already been mentioned significantly. 
we have the recarbonization soil program that we call rec soil we know that and the soil doctors what other activities have aslac members been engaged in well specifically there was significant involvement in the action framework system of indicators working group now this these indicators allow us to better understand the progress we're making with regard to the targets and goals that we have set we have also seen that the members have provided support for the editorial committee of the soil resource global status report we also know that soils do not necessarily recognize political divisions. That's quite obvious. So sometimes it makes more sense to draw a division within a country because the soils are different versus focusing on the political administrative divisions. The region has also played a very key role in uh, commemorating World Soil Day, which was on December 5th last year under the logo Soil and Water Source of Life. The launch of this commemorative day was key in the region. You can see a picture of the webinar. As far as the rec soil program in Latin America and the Caribbean is concerned, we've already heard that Costa Rica and Mexico are currently implementing a rec soil pilot project. And these projects will be fed by a variety of different indicators that will have an impact on other programs. For example, the, the Green Climate Fund project in Mexico to boost climate change resilience by way of uh, recarbonization of uh, soils. Now, there are other activities carried out with uh, UN organizations. For example, the Climate Change uh, Framework Convention, uh, Biodiversity Convention. It looks quite simple when you see this on the screen, but soil recarbonization is not so simple. And I'm very happy to mention that FAO's actions have been very coordinated and integrated and have involved a variety of different partners. For example, the uh, Global Soil Partnership, the regional office of FAO, government representatives. Obviously, this calls for uh, working closely with R&D uh, organizations as well. And the soil laboratory networks are also playing a key role here in terms of defining baselines for soils and for gathering good practices relative to carbon sequestering. For example, the soil doctors have played a key role as well. Just let me briefly refer to what has been carried out by this program in Latin America and the Caribbean. In fact, seven countries work with the Soil Doctors Program. You can see them listed on the screen here. Antigua, Barbuda, Bolivia, Colombia, Chile, Mexico, St. Lucia, and Venezuela. As far to date, a total of 657 uh, trainers have 
been involved, uh, 519 are from Latin America, and we have to date 1,832 soil doctors, 18, uh, 11,882 from the region. So this uh, training has been key, and we truly appreciate all of the support by the countries working with the soil doctors program. Now let me refer briefly to the technical networks of the AMS, the Global Soil Partnership. Unfortunately, the speaker's, speaker's audio quality is quite wanting. Here, I just wanted to emphasize the contribution by the countries in the region, the LAC countries, relative to the Global Soil Partnership's overall activities with regard to the international network of black soils argentina brazil chile colombia uh, mexico and uruguay have taken part in a variety of different uh, activities specifically related to the sustainable management of soils as far as the international network of salt affected soils brazil argentina colombia took part in a survey Colombia contributed to chapter six of the global assessment. Mexico contributed to developing a webinar on soil salinity map. And uh, Colombia and Bolivia made presentations at the INSAS meeting. With regard to the soil, international network on soil pollution, Uh, Ecuador, Trinidad and Tobago have participated uh, by conducting case studies on cadmium in cacao. As far as the International Network on Soil Biodiversity is concerned, this is a very key network for keeping our soils alive. 36 chapters have been presented as a whole, six by Latin American countries and four case studies by Latin American and Caribbean countries. As far as the international network on uh, fertilizers analysis is concerned, 23 and uh, 18 laboratories from the LAC region took part in the INSOP INFA meetings, respectively. And 13 LAC laboratories took part in the second meeting of the working group. Finally, with regard to INSII, The region has made contributions to soil nutrient global maps and the GN, GSN map. 18 countries and 74 participants from the region took part actually in online training. We have also heard about support by the FAO regional office. I'm not going to repeat this. I just wanted to thank the regional office for all of the support provided thus far for the regional cooperation projects. And thank you for the technical support and the consulting as well, and for uh, participating with the TCP project. And for um, providing support uh, for tools for better promoting uh, agri-food systems, better agri-food systems. Let me talk about the soil community practitioners. We have received technical collaboration from the regional office of the FAO as well, and all of this has been crucial for the LAC region. Anna Posas already referred to that, so I will just move on and briefly refer to the new areas of work of the partnership. In practically all of these new areas of work, the laboratories, soil analysis laboratories can play a key role. 
Now, let me wrap up with some of the activities planned for this year. For example, on April 16th, uh, in conjunction with ASLAC and PLACA, we'll be holding a soil governance workshop on the state of art of the legal and institutional framework for soil sustainable management in Latin America and the Caribbean. There will also be a meeting on 7 to 8 of May. It's the 11th Regional Assembly of ASLAC and July, August, and September. We'll bring a series of webinars on soil sustainable management, again, in collaboration with ASLAC and PLACA, and then Rec Soil, Soil Doctors, and the uh, Fertilizers Code will be the key aspects addressed. Now, I wanted to show you this slide because a great deal of our activities are related to improving soils and having a sustainable soil management protocol as well as the necessary mechanisms to understand what changes are taking place in the soils thanks to the different practices adopted. And the role of the soil analysis laboratories is essential for addressing soil productivity, the amount of organic carbon in soils, for addressing the physical properties of soil and biological activity, as well as the socioeconomic indicators that favor adopting the MS, MSS. It's important to involve different stakeholders to encourage the adoption of these practices. And just in closing, I wanted to emphasize that in Latsolan, there are more than 225 registered laboratories. Many of these have played a very active role in the comparative exercises carried out. And this is very important because this allows us to become familiar with the laboratory's capacity and also so that we may standardize protocols and to ensure good quality outcomes of the laboratories, but at the same time, their activity fosters greater collaboration across the board. I would also like to emphasize that there are several different national networks of laboratories in the region, Mexico, in Chile, for example. I would like to urge our colleagues from the other countries that have not yet consolidated a national laboratory to do so. Hopefully, this workshop will provide you with the opportunity to exchange experiences with your regional partners in terms of setting up a national network of laboratories. And ideally, you will be able to learn from your colleagues as to how this process has evolved. I would also like to recognize that many of the countries throughout the region clearly need soil analyses. And as a result, uh, it's uh, crucial to count on the laboratories to have this information, but also uh, in order to foster better decision making. It's also important to understand the various practices carried out so that we can have a positive impact on the health of our soils. Our region is very diverse, so it's important to have local and regional information as well. Thus, we need to work with different parameters and indicators. It's also very important to continue to reinforce the work of Latsolan, and I believe that this workshop is an excellent opportunity for that. And finally, allow me to mention that, well, going back to Anna's question, that open-ended question, where do we uh, see additional opportunities? I would like to propose something that many countries in the region are exploring and throughout the region, but beyond the region, and that is the use of carbon bonds and having a volunteer market of carbon bonds. 
One of the key pieces of this puzzle is having better information on the health of soils. And I think the agricultural livestock soils may contribute significantly to carbon sequestering and uh, thus create markets, certified markets in our region. This would be very helpful for farmers who have adopted sustainable soil practices to gain access to additional resources and to benefit from those good practices. And that's what I have for you. Thank you very much again for allowing me to be here and thank you for your attention. And I wish you a very successful workshop. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sol Ortiz. And now we will receive Diana Delgado, who is Latsalam's vice chairman. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure for me to speak on behalf of 23 different uh, countries and 31 country representatives here. I would like to uh, offer the floor to each of the uh, presenters after hearing your names so we can uh, talk about your needs. Antigua y Mura, Bernard Beat from Antigua and Barbuda. Vernon, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Pleasure being here. Uh, my name is Vernon Bird. I am a lab analyst. I am representing the Department of Analytical Services of Antigua and Barbuda. Next slide, please. Okay, so our laboratory has a number of 20 staff members. 15 of those are technical officers. Um, of those, we have six biologists and three chemists, um, two administrative staff and two ancillary staff members. Um, the type of analysis that we conduct are mainly the chemical parameters, which are pH, total dissolved solids, electrical conductivity, nitrates, potassium, phosphorus, um, organic matter, and moisture content. Okay, in 2023, we, we um, handled a total of over 3,000 samples. The greater majority of those are water samples, mainly marine environmental waters, as well as potable water. Um, only 1% of those were, would have been soil samples. Um, so for last year, we handled just about 149 samples. Of those, 123 came from the Soil Care Project. And in 2018 to 2019, we handled just over 400 um, soil samples, which came from the Moroccan Soil Fertility Project. Next slide, please. Okay, so the use of glossolan SOPs um, have not been implemented at this time, but this is something that we will put into practice after this week's training. Um, reference materials, we do have some reference materials, um, but not all are traceable um, back to a certified body. Um, our participation in interlaboratory proficiency testing, we have not done any for soil as of yet, but for other matrices such as pesticides and mercury analysis, we have done that. Okay, we have not um, implemented um, soil spectroscopy, so that would be something entirely new to our laboratory. And our three biggest priorities would be the development of quality assurance and quality controls for our soil analysis. Um, 
we're in dire need of sample processing equipment and um, also equipment to measure total nitrogen. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, thank you. <laughs> eh, bueno, eh, son presentaciones cortas, pero nos dan una idea de As que... you may see, these are very short presentations. However, it is a good um, way to have an idea of what each country is in need of and what they are performing. We will offer the floor to Daniel Carrera from Argentina. Daniel? No, no, pero sí, sí, no pasa. Ellos. Ah, ahí está, eso lo preguntaba. Eh, la, la, la próxima, muchas gracias. Bueno, eh, yo represento al laboratorio del Instituto de Suelos de, de Argentina. I, I'm speaking of behalf, on behalf of the INTA from Argentina. This is a research institute. This is a decentralized uh, body which reports to the Ministry of Agriculture. The next one, please. Next slide, please. Bueno, esta es una reseña un poco lo que nos habían solicitado. Well, this is just a, a bullet pointing of what we do. We have uh, three areas in our lab, the chemical and physical microbiology, micromorphology areas. We have 10 laboratory experts, five professionals, three technical and two uh, assistants, plus uh, some uh, other uh, professionals who assist us. Also, we have work apprentices with us. We do a number of analyses, including chemical, physical, biological, water, and uh, vegetal matter. We have a number of samples that vary between 2,000 and 4,000 uh, samples, different types of trials, and it, it's mainly for investigation research work. Uh, we do not provide service to consultants. This is done through the national network. There is also uh, the ZAMLA, which is the um, agriculture and livestock network of laboratories. In uh, terms of the um, standard operating procedures, we don't apply those SOPs. We apply our own standards, which are um, harmonized. We do perform comparative trials just to compare the standards of Argentina and those from the international laboratories. This is done through collaborative work done at the INTA network. And uh, this way we can check consistency between the two SOPs. In terms of reference material, we do use that and we also create our own reference material based on our own soils and using the collaboration with other laboratories in the national network. We also participate in uh, trials at uh, Glossolan. This is a way in which we uh, participate in the PTs from Glossolan. There is this program which gathers the Provinza Laboratory, also the ISIC and RISLAV laboratories. So we provide uh, trial work there and we collaborate with this inter-laboratory work. We organize collaborative work with the different laboratories, not to assess the quality of the laboratory, but rather to uh, address and, and, and review the actual protocols that the laboratories use. We also run uh, soil spectroscopy. This is part of the work we do with the RISLAV, the national network. We have uh, 
work, which is scattered across the work, across the, the network, I mean. But we do have uh, studies from uh, the 60s, from the 1960s. This is information regarding the soil in Argentina back then. So this is a good point of reference when it comes to spectroscopy work. This is the only thing we have so far. And in terms of our needs, uh, at the national network, well, we basically are in need of an infrared spectrophotometer to perform soil analysis. We also are in need of more technical personnel and we need some uh, uh, equipment maintenance work to be done. Sometimes because of the political conditions, this is not easy to, to uh, keep up with. And let me just share with you some pictures of the laboratory in Argentina. That's all, thank you. Let's hear from Rene Bachus from Barbados. You may take the floor, Rene. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure to be representing Government Analytical Services Barbados. We are a lab under the Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Nutritional Security. Our primary goal is to be the leading provider of analytical services in the area of chemistry and microbiology in Barbados. With a small staff of just 14 analysts, there is the microbiology department, the organic chemistry department and the inorganic chemistry department under which we perform soil analysis. We analyze approximately 50 soil samples, samples annually, but this is aside from the 5,000 water, wastewater and food samples we do. We perform chemical and physical analysis on soils such as organic matter, cation exchange capacity, nitrate, sulfate, and sodium, potassium. Currently, we are not an accredited lab, but we perform proficiency tests under Proficiency Testing Canada, where we do testing twice a year in January and June. For these analyses, we test for our metals, anions, and nutrients. And we have no reference material and we use Glossolans SOP partly for organic matter. And our biggest priorities for our lab, we realize that we need a training initiative to introduce analysts to soil chemistry because when the farmers come to us, there is a disconnect in when we try to explain, you know, what are the issues, what their issues are, and then for us to recommend analyses for them. So that would be one. We also need more staff members yeah. to conduct the analysis and then a larger room dedicated to soil analysis. So this is just a photo of the lab. On the top left is the outside of the lab. We have the instrument room. And then the bottom left is our soil preparation room. Thank you. Bueno, continuamos con Bolivia, Luz Cáceres. Let us offer the floor to Luz Cáceres from Bolivia. Bien, buenos días a todos. Eh, un saludo a todos los hermanos de Latinoamérica. Greetings to all of our colleagues from Latin America and the Caribbean, and thank you to the Chilean colleagues for hosting us in this beautiful country. My name is Luis Fernando Cáceres. I represent the Bolivian uh, at nuclear Energy Agency, which hosts the Soil Laboratory, uh, which has been in place for more than 40 years. Next slide, please. Here we have some of the laboratory attributes. Six individuals work uh, at the laboratory today. We conduct soil 
and uh, pollutant analyses and uh, quality control on fertilizers. We have also been uh, producing uh, fertilizers based on urea, and this is uh, thanks to the gas uh, nat based natural resources that we have. We have the pie chart shows the different activities that we have uh, developed as of late as well. Next slide, please. In 2023, we had a busy year in terms of uh, analytics. Close to 3,500 soil samples were taken. And this is part of a state level soil analysis program in order to uh, map out the soils nationwide. So this year has been quite busy with an exceptionally large number of samples. We also do work partially with the Glossolan SOPs as far as reference material is concerned. Yes, we do use the reference material. You can see the ones in the picture. Next slide, please. We do take part in interlaboratory uh, comparative studies. We've worked with the IAEA on two of these and two other um, aptitude uh, assays with potential uh, research activities regarding soil, for example, using radio tracers to assess the uh, to assess soil fertility. Thank you. Next slide. Here you have some pictures of uh, the chemical environmental laboratory in La Paz, Bolivia. Thank you. Brazil, go ahead. Good afternoon. Let me begin. I'm ready when you're ready. I work for Embrapa. And in the past, I was responsible for developing soil analyses in Brazil with the academic sector. Today at Embrapa, we have one of the four soil quality programs. This is not the only one uh, that provides a national profile because we have laboratories spread out nationwide. So far, we work with 14 uh, technicians. Those working at the lab are technicians, not the administrative workers. What types of analysis did we carry out? Essentially chemical analyses on plants and soils, physical, mineralogical analyses, and we conduct analyses on fertilizers as well. Uh, 5,000 samples per year. We are actually uh, changing laboratories. We were working in the past with a laboratory dating back to the 80s, and we have transitioned to a uh, state-of-the-art new laboratory. We do not work with Glossolan SOPs because we have our own dating back to the 70s. And what we're doing today is conducting statistics comparisons so that in the future we can correlate our national data with the FAO SOP harmonization process. As far as reference materials concerned within the laboratory, yes, we do this for soil and for plants, for internal control and external control purposes. Take part in uh, aptitude assays. Generally speaking, they're national assays. That's what we do. Do we work with soil spectroscopy? Yes, we do. What are our three major priorities? To periodically maintain the equipment. It's very easy to purchase then, but keeping them in good shape and maintaining the equipment is not that easy. We also need to um, update our equipment. 
post-COVID and hire new lab technicians and analysts. Some are retiring, and this is not necessarily an area of work uh, preferred by young people. Okay, here you have some pictures. I have the top line in red where new samples are taken, but the analysis is not conducted there. We separate those sites. And then the area where these samples are prepared is different from where the samples are analyzed. We manually prepare some of the samples. For example, there are certain samples where we cannot remove uh, iron nodules, which is common in Brazilian soil. But as far as uh, soil fertility is concerned, we have an excellent mill that works well for that. With regard to what is shown in green, I just wanted to point out that water production is separate. We work with three different quality types of water, depending on the methodology, because we have aluminum and copper in the water. So we work with uh, reverse osmosis, and we work on separating the water. Also, as far as uh, waste separation is concerned, we do that as well. We have special recipients for different types of waste. Here you can see a risk map, an example of a risk map that's present at every laboratory. And then waste, hazardous waste material is also separated and, uh, put into these special containers, which are then shipped to a proper laboratory for disposal, a proper site for disposal. And then, of course, every laboratory has its own uh, wash station in the event of contamination. Thank you. We have two representatives from Colombia. I will talk about some of the laboratories. Next slide, please. We have the National Environmental Laboratory in Cundimarca, uh, which is the National Environmental Authority in Cundimarca. I am the area leader. and. There are roughly 12 individuals working there uh, with, in chemical engineers, environmental engineers, agri uh, agricultural uh, engineers, agronomists. And this is an environmental laboratory where we work with soil, water, and air uh, analyses. We have different types of analyses as well because what we have foliar, soil and hazardous waste analyses. We conduct microbiological, chemical, and physical analyses. As far as the samples analyzed last year, roughly 3,000 last year, these 3,000 3, samples are key for our soil degradation program. And this is uh, one way for us to support farmers to understand the degree of soil degradation and the soil health as well. As far as the use of SOPs from uh, Glossoland is concerned, that's partial. Partial. We work with our regulatory authority as well, and so we are able to accredit our and validate our own SOPs. So we work with our own and the global land as well. We do work with reference material. We work with WEPA thus far. We do take part in aptitude assays, for example, the PT and the ring test. We thus far do not work with spectroscopy. We have several different priorities today in our case, for example, 
having a government, uh, because we are a government laboratory, we have uh, limited resources and we are not so aligned with the national soil regulations. We tend, so again, we have limited regulations with regard to physical uh, properties. We do not have a lot of space in the technical area. We have many different uh, activities that we carried out and we are lacking in terms of uh, the right personnel. We need experts for validation for a chemical, physical, soil analysis and sampling. And we have also determined that there uh, is a, a lack of knowledge uh, in the universities in terms of methodology. And it seems as though soil sampling is viewed as something quite easy and a simple procedure uh, involving digging up soil, but that's not the case. And it's very important to understand the physical characteristics to better understand how uh, nutrients move through the soil. So it's important to uh, work better with the students and interns to further develop this knowledge and expertise. Next slide, please. This is our laboratory. It's quite big. And uh, as an environmental authority, we need to show that we are taking good care of our resources. We are the only laboratory in Colombia today that has implemented a soil quality uh, station uh, where we show how water moves through soil in real time. And then we also have our air quality activities this is one of the issues we have in Colombia, and we also work with water, so all three areas. You can see another part of the laboratory where we have three small areas, not enough space for 12 employees, and there we host specialty equipment, uh, microbiology equipment, uh, etc. So it's quite crowded, and that's our laboratory. Thank you. Continuamos con, eh, seguimos con Colombia, Melissa Gutierrez. Buenos días para todos. Es un gusto Good acompañar. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My pleasure to be here. Thank you for FAO, FAO's uh, invitation, especially thanks to uh, Chile. I am speaking on behalf of the uh, Soil Laboratory in Colombia. And next, please. This is for our work team. We have 42 people who are members of the lab, 21 people working in the general area, four people in the physical analysis area, nine people in the chemical area, three in biology, and four in mineralogy. We normally handle samples at uh, soil, compost, vegetal uh, matter, and irrigation uh, level. We have, uh, we are fortunate of providing services of uh, soil microbiology. In total, we offer 171 analytical packages. We are a state-owned entity, and the main focus of attention in our lab is chemistry, followed by uh, physics and engineering, also mineralogy, microbiology. There is an average processing of 6,400 samples per year, 1,800 requests from both internal and external customers. We use some of the Glossolans SOPs. We normally use them for cation exchange capacity, but in terms of the benchmark of reference, we have been uh, applying modified uh, methodologies as per WIPAL, 
but internally Colombia at this point does not have an accredited laboratory to create uh, benchmark material. This is why we reach out to international sources such as WIPAL. This is the uh, certification entity in Colombia, IDEAM. And in the chemical area, we would like to continue to further expand until we can cover all four topics. We normally participate in uh, test uh, works in the country. We perform work with the uh, social, excuse me, Colombian Society of Soil Sciences. We also reach out to WIPAL uh, protocols, and this is uh, mainly what we use as a benchmark and as the accreditation entity. We have a uh, NIR spectroscopy system since uh, last year. As you may see, this is a brand new piece of equipment. Those who have uh, worked with this technique know how important it is to have enough time to do all of the reading, calibration, modeling work. We are innovating since last year and we expect to soon have results ready to start offering services to clients. Among our main uh, needs, we have three being a state-owned entity. We need priority care, priority service. We have an old building, which is where we work, and it has been in place for over 50 years. You may imagine that we have some uh, infrastructure issues to solve, but also we need to uh, have a timely metrological uh, insurance and maintenance, both preventive and corrective maintenance of our equipment. As Diana said, out there in Colombia, we need permanent updating of the personnel in analytical methods. We need to train them we also want to retain them and help them get acquainted with the different techniques. We know that our days are very long, very uh, intense, and not everyone is willing to work at our laboratories. We also wish to guarantee economic resources for the supply of reagents, materials, and supplies. Being a state-owned entity, there is a slow-moving uh, bureaucracy when it comes to the supply of services at our lab. Thank you so much. Bueno, continuamos con Costa Rica, María Fernanda Campos. Let's offer the floor to María Fernanda Campos from Costa Rica. Good afternoon. Thank you so much. Thanks to Chile uh, for inviting us. Thanks to the network for inviting us too. I am here speaking on behalf of the Soil and Foliar Laboratory, the uh, Agronomic Research Center from the University of Costa Rica. Our coordinator, Juan Carlos Mendez, couldn't attend, but I'm speaking here on his behalf. I am the technical manager at the lab. That's our team. Uh, currently, we have two active uh, analysts also people in charge of the administrative work who help us with the recording of samples and also IT uh, workers who help us with the software uh, work. And uh, we have the very valuable contribution of students, uh, graduate students that are participating through scholarships. They help us quite a lot in the processing of samples in each section. These are the analysis that we perform, mainly chemical. Here are the different types of uh, elements we uh, analyze, soils, foliar samples, agricultural, farming uh, water, also the um, organic uh, fertilizers, also uh, solid and liquid fertilizers. We receive an average of 16,412 samples. Uh, this is per year. This is the average of the last three years or so. 
And this last year, we received over 20,000 samples to analyze mainly from soil and foliar kind. Regarding uh, the use of the SOPs, we use them partly since uh, in some of our methodologies, they may apply. Most of the analysis we perform coincide with these procedures, especially when it comes to carbon. We don't perform organic carbon analysis, only total carbon through the carbon nitrogen uh, methodology. When it comes to benchmark or reference material, we have internal material of, from two soils which have been sampled for a very long time, many years. On this graph, you can see the mapping work in time with mins and max. Um, those are the limits. And this is telling us that we are properly meeting the analytical procedures in each material. We also have a foliar benchmark material. We are accredited according to the 17,025 uh, regulation. And each uh, material we process goes through the same exact quality management process to assure uh, the quality of our product. And now regarding the interlaboratory competency trials, we participate with WIPA in the foliar area, and the Acrisolan uh, network is the one in charge of accrediting us. We organize interlaboratory uh, activities, and when it comes to spectroscopy, so far we haven't offered this service publicly, but we do have experience in the research area. Some of our colleagues already are doing spectroscopy. However, we don't have the equipment we need. The only piece of equipment we have is shared between us and the university. So we have a very short uh, period of time to perform work on it. We are mainly focused on investigation research work, and we have three needs in particular to re-establish uh, the activities of our network at Costa Rica. Because of the pandemic and many other issues, we are uh, less active uh, lately. And we also have equipment needs in particular, as I said, being it a public uh, or a state-owned university, also laboratory, we don't have access to all the necessary supplies that we need or to have or wish to have. So we do our best with what we have. So this is part of the experience, I believe. Also, we need to strengthen the methodologies coming from research work so far. The analysts we have at the lab come from a researcher's world, or researchers in uh, soil nutrition in particular, and they uh, develop methodologies that we apply and we give them support. There's also teaching and social action as part of our efforts. We normally receive samples from all of the local producers, but also from some international producers. This is a picture of our laboratory. And of course, you're welcome to visit anytime. So we can we can meet you in person there. Thank you. Continuamos con Cuba, Yodani López Fonseca. Let's uh, continue with Cuba. Giovanni, Giovanni, excuse me, Giovanni López. Good morning. Good afternoon. Um, thank you for inviting me. I am the representative of the Cuban Ministry of Agriculture. I am here on behalf of the Gamma Way Laboratory. In Cuba, we have 16 uh, laboratories which report to the Ministry of Agriculture. Five of them belong to the Soil Institute. Well, the 
Well, here we can take a look at the uh, data from our different laboratories, including Kamaway. We have six specialists at our lab. Uh, we have 10 technicians, including an electronic expert. They perform chemical, physical, biological analysis, also fertilizer analysis, organic substrate, water, nutrition, foliar samples, and uh, animal food. Um, we run uh, tests on an average of 5,000 samples per year using the uh, closed lands SOPs. Partly, we also apply procedures from the universities and we have laboratories which also provide services at our lab. lab. All these laboratories are ruled by the soil policy, which has been updated in, in year 2022. As I said, we use the Glossoland SOPs in part, and in in terms of the reference material at the lab, we use reference material, benchmark material is in use. Also, we have participated in the PT ring testing uh, interlaboratory test. And regarding spectroscopy, we do uh, run sp spectroscopic uh, tests in uh, organic matter and phosphorus and here are our needs mainly computers software pieces um, a printer and two uh, combined ph electrodes our laboratories as i said are state-owned and we mainly i driven are driven by uh, projects we are a bit short of, of staff headcount in cuba we have the same issues as everywhere else so we are making our best efforts to build a larger team and to have all of the necessary technical staff that the laboratory needs this is the Camaway laboratory in cuba it's just one of the four you can just uh, take a look at the pictures and draw your own conclusions thank you Bueno, debido a los tiempos, por favor, eh, cada vez que pase un laboratorio un poquitico más rápido y luego en el transcurso. Please all speak faster because we're running out of time. Interpreters will do the best they can given the request for extra speed by the speakers. Ecuador, next, please. Buenas tardes con todo. Bueno, eh, el laboratorio de Soil Laboratory, which is the reference laboratory in Ecuador, and it's part of the Phytosanitary Control and Regulatory Authority as an agency. Or the laboratory is part of the agency, as I mentioned. And uh, there are five different laboratories uh, overall included under the agency but 22 rather are specifically uh, working in the area of uh, plant and food safety. Now, there are six of us who work at this specific laboratory and we have support analysts as well. The type of analyses that we carry out are physical chemical on soils, foliar and water and we are certified under ISO as well, 1017.25. Our first accreditation was on uh, determining cadmium because of the importance of being a cacao exporter. As far as glossolana soupies, we use these partially for comparative methods relative to pH, uh, organ in organic mat mat matter and uh, black soils, we 
do work with reference material. We work with the ADA company from the United States. Also, as far as uh, interlaboratory aptitude assays are concerned, we work with those as well in order to secure that our accreditation is up to date. We do not traditionally, uh, I, I, think, I think most of the laboratories use traditional soil spectroscopy, uh, but it would be more important for us to um, work with uh, data base, et cetera. What are our priorities? We need to uh, revamp our equipment. Starting in 2023, we have been part of uh, uh, an equipment renewal process. We are acquiring equipment and the necessary related technology from the market. And we are also interested in uh, training related to intercomparisons or data statistic analysis. This is uh, related to uh, getting back to our uh, uh, efforts related to the National Soil Laboratory Network. The, co the COVID pandemic put a bit of a damper on that, so we would like to revisit that. Thank you. El Salvador, Claudia Maria Lino Rodriguez has the floor. Good afternoon, everyone. I am here on behalf of the National Center for Agricultural and Forestry Technology Laboratory, CENTA. This is part of the Livestock and Agricultural Ministry, and the main goal is to generate and transfer uh, agricultural and livestock-related technology. Next slide, please. Uh, we have four technicians, a coordinator, and two support staff members working at the laboratory. We conduct chemical and physical soil analyses. That's all we do. We process between 2,500 and 4,000 samples annually. Although Salvador is a small country, the Senta Soil Laboratory is a national reference laboratory and most of the producers work with our and turn to our laboratory we are quite reliable and they depend on us to conduct their analyses with regard to using local solan sops we have uh 100 adopted the electrical conduct to conductivity sop but as far as the other uh activities are concerned we work with our own sops we do not have certified reference material but we do gather in-house reference material, and we conduct statistics analyses. And in keeping with those outcomes, we uh, include them uh, under 40 sample sets. We have taken part in only two ring tests. We do not use soil spectroscopy, and our three priorities are inputs, because in the end, we are a government body and uh, purchasing is quite laborious. Resources are limited. We have uh, many pieces of equipment that work, but they are quite obsolete. Uh, many of these pieces of equipment uh, are more than 40 years old, so we need uh, to revamp these, and we need chemical, rather technical training as well. We also provide technical recommendations to the to the producers in terms of fertilizer use, et cetera. It's also important to mention that the soil laboratory website and the CENTA's website have a virtual map with data that has have been fed by the soil laboratory. So any individual, whether from academia or from the productive sector, may gain access to that and view what the current status of soil nutrients is nationwide. And that's my presentation. Thank you. 
Let's uh, hear from Guatemala. Three individuals. Let's start with Virginia Piril. Good afternoon. Thank you for the invitation. It's an honor to be here with you. I am here on behalf of the Agricultural Science and Technology Institute, ICTA. And uh, I also work with the Soil and Plant Laboratory. Next slide, please. The laboratory does not have many staff members. There's only three individuals, and the types of analyses are chemical and physical, primarily, specifically for soils. We do we work mostly for soils. We do not work a lot on plants. And so far, uh, 3,000 samples were conducted last year, mostly for research purposes. We do not use a globe. Solan SOPs. I do have some questions regarding that that I would like to delve into during this workshop. We do work with reference material for our foliar samples with WEPAL. We do conduct some aptitude assays with national laboratories, but not many. We do not use soil spectroscopy. What are our main needs? Well, in recent years, the laboratory's focus has been uh, strengthening our equipment capacity. So we require a great deal of training and then certification. We also need to update some of our equipment with uh, new methodologies, and we also need to remodel the facilities. Next slide, please. There you can see some images of our laboratory. Thank you. Aníbal Galindo is the next speaker from this country. Good afternoon. I am here on behalf of the Soil Laboratory from the San Carlos University, the School of Agronomy. I would like to mention that following the pandemic, the university faced a crisis and was closed for roughly a year and a half. This year, we went back to in-person work and logically the laboratory's activities uh, were halted entirely during that period. We are staffed by three professional workers and three technicians. We conduct, well, back then, we conducted chemical, physical, analysis on uh, vegetable uh, tissue, some uh, improvement uh, material and fertilizer, 2,000 samples conducted annually. We partially use the Glucosolan SOPs. We do not use reference material. Right now we're updating this and we have not participated in the assays as well, given this three-year period in which we were closed. We do not work with soil spectroscopy, and our main needs are accreditation, using reference material, and implementing some biological analyses. Simple ones. That's it. And you can see an overview of the laboratory. And that's what we have for you today. Thank you. And Herbert Larios. Hi there, I'm Herbert Larios. I represent the National Coffee Association Laboratory. We are known as Anabao. We are the reference laboratory for the coffee sector and other agricultural sectors. We are accredited as well, and we are accredited for pH in soil, in water. Uh, we are accredited for nitrogen, for foliar tissue and non-organic uh, material as well. 
We are staffed by 16 individuals, primarily biologists, agronomists, uh, apiculture, apiculturists, etc. Essentially, what we conduct in terms of analyses are soil analyses, foliar analyses, phytopathologies, uh, we uh, conduct analyses for nematodes, uh, microbiological soil analyses, and soon in June, with enough, we will be accredited for other asks, uh, other tasks. Uh, we will also be accredited for phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium soon. We have uh, an application that's called Best Soil, Best Coffee. And the soil, the, the coffee producers can use this app to determine the quality of their soil and it will draw up a fertilization plan for them. As far as samples are concerned, we conduct roughly 25,000 samples annually. And the reference material we have at the laboratory uh, come from SCP, a Canadian uh, reference organization, WEPAL as well, NIST, that's obviously a reference for soils and foliar, and we use it for fertilizers as well. We work with the ASPAC method, the Australasia method, and the Campina uh, Agronomist Institute, IAC. We also purchase reference material from S CTS. And the aptitude uh, assays for the 16 accredited parameters are through Merck, for example, and CTS, again, the United States, ASPAC, from Australasia. And it's interesting because the Madruga University in the United States is implementing uh, something related to fertilizer, and they have come up with a monthly comparative method, which is quite interesting. It's interesting because it allows for a monthly uh, intercomparison. Essentially, as far as uh, technology is concerned, we work with UVAA and ICP soil spectroscopy. What are our three needs? Uh, we need to calibrate our uh, crop methodologies. As far as foliar work is concerned, we all want to have the best possible calibration, but we would also like to come up with uh, crop methodology calibration and uh, interlaboratory assays as well. Be nice to work with other laboratories. And finally, producing reference material. As a laboratory, we have implemented ISO 17034 and are looking to be the uh, reference laboratory for Central America regarding that standard. Here you can see some inside pictures of the laboratory and some technology. We work with some Brazilian technology, the plasma equipment that you see up top, and we have two online devices. And on the right, you can see a different type of equipment that works with uh, organic carbon and uh, nitrogen in soils. Next slide, please. Water analysis and uh, the digestive area. You can see that. Then we have uh, molecular biology just recently launched two months ago. Here, basically, we work with uh, characterizations, and then we have our soil microbiology uh, area where we count total bacteria uh, using uh, determining phosphorus and 
potassium. We also, as far as coffee is concerned, it's important uh, to know that uh, one of these uh, diseases uh, greatly affected Guatemala in 12, 2012, so it's important to uh, roll out uh, molecular biological uh, pieces of equipment to make sure that this doesn't affect us again. Guayana, Guyana, your turn. Thank you. Very good day to you, everyone. Okay, so my name is David Fredericks, and I represent the National Agriculture Research and Extension Institute of Guyana. Next slide. Yeah, so this all chemistry laboratory in Guyana basically serves all the farmers outside of the sugar and the rice industry. The reason for that is because those are established institutions and they have their own services provider in terms of their labs. And so we look at almost eight crops and service all farmers, uh, researchers, and also those entrepreneurs who are getting into consortiums and large-scale cultivations. The lab has been established for more than uh, 80 years. Unfortunately, like most labs, they've been going into degradation processes. And so last year, we decided a process of rehabilitating the lab and also re retooling all the equipment within the lab. Next slide, please. The staff is a very small staff. Uh, most of us uh, within the laboratory are research scientists, research assistants with either a first degree or a master's degree. And even those who are technicians are in the process of getting themselves qualified with first degrees and masters. Next slide, please. Please, next slide. That's just them in the uniform when they do the work. Next slide, please. In terms of the analysis we conduct, we basically do all soil analyses, not so much of water and uh, biological analyses, but mostly soil. And you see, we cover the full range of the cations um, within the analysis that we do. There's some that we have not yet been very active in, like nitrogen, molybdenum, boron. Um, things like silicon, chloride, cobalt, and selenium. But those with the new instruments that we are bringing on board, we will be able to do those analyses uh, once they're properly trained. Every year we do about 4,000 samples on average. That might look a lot for the number of persons that we have and equipment that we do not have. Because what we've done with equipment going out of commission, we have gone to servicing with the basic samples, those that are priority, and so we'll be able to service them and give them the necessary results they need in the simple things like the pH, electrical conductivity, and what have you. In terms of reference material, we do have samples because we've been established for a long time. We've kept bulk, bulk samples over time. And we're able to reference those with repeated analyses over time. And so we know when we're having the cups within the system and things are going wrong. In collaborative uh, proficiency testing, we do not do that at present. Uh, most of our SOPs were developed because the lab were initially developed with the um, uh, University of Florida and then North Carolina. So most of those methodologies we're still implementing. Um, we are in the process of establishing co uh, communication and a link with Glossoland. So I suppose after this um, workshop, we'll be having a lot of our work within that network uh, going forward. Next slide, please. In terms of our needs, all our needs are surrounding equipment. And I say that because to make proper soil uh, recommendations for farmers, we need to have all the necessary equipment, both in the soil physical and soil chemistry laboratory. At present, our soil physical laboratory is more or less uh, defunct. It's out of commission. So we will need to have that fully refurbished. We've started the process with the soil chemistry laboratory. And so that's why I say the first equipment I have there deals with getting the retooling of those labs. So rather than equipment again, it has to do with capacity building because you have a lot of new staff, you're gonna have new equipment, they need to be properly trained to use those equipment so that you do not have long time for misuse of equipment. And thirdly, maintenance, again, surrounding equipment. 
a lot of times you have one piece of equipment, maybe one AA, maybe one uh, spectrophotometer, maybe some, and that goes down, that means your system is down. So you need to have both equipment and you need to have a maintenance screw, a maintenance plan in place. We do not have that. But when we were functional properly many years ago, it is when you had an in-house crew that is servicing your equipment. Uh, next slide, if you have more. We have always been aiming to provide farmers with a service within two weeks, 14 days. And so we have a workflow that describes exactly how we move from point to point within, how much time it should take, the receipts they have for the different stages, the farmers have for the different stages. And we could only do that if we are fully refurbished, have people that persons who are properly trained and equipment that is properly maintained. Quickly, next slide. Oh, they want to somebody else. Thank you. Bueno, continuamos con Honduras. Tenemos cuatro representantes e iniciamos con María Cristina Rivera. We will continue with Honduras, Mrs. María Cristina Rivera. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. We uh, would like to speak on behalf of our laboratories in Honduras. We report to the Secretariat of Agriculture and Livestock. We also are part of the development department, the irrigation technology and drainage development department. We report to the uh, state ministry and we um, follow the rules of the government. We receive uh, funding from, from the government. And we have four uh, laboratories. We have the soil mechanics lab, physiology, hydraulics, and concrete laboratories. However, we have just uh, joined the network. We have just joined the Glossal Land Network and those laboratories in our country, which are currently operating, are unfortunately uh, very uh, in, in a very high need of personnel. We need people because we only have two uh, analysts. One of them is uh, just receiving the training. So we are quite small team. Despite the long history of the lab, this laboratory for many years has uh, devoted to physical analysis. And we have done uh, chemical analysis in part, field analysis mainly for our own institution, carrying a portable piece of equipment. We have run uh, connectivity testing, on um, pH testing, and the samples that we analyze per year are 415 average. Those 450 include uh, training samples, research training, um, and customer service sampling. Our laboratory has just joined the network, as I have said, and we know that we will be uh, highly favored by the new projects. We will be, uh, our, our team will be strengthened by, by becoming part of this network. DIPCAM is in charge of the soil fur uh, project, also in charge of the soil mapping work. I believe that um, the improvement of the lab is critical. We are found in the center of the country and we are certain that an improvement of our laboratory will help the uh, technical experts and of course, and mainly the growers, the, the farmers who need our assistance, those who really need uh, the technology that we have. And not just the chemical, uh, type of trials, but other trials too. Yeah. 
la utilización de los op de in terms of the application of Glossolans SOPs, we are just partly applying them very little. And when it comes to benchmark material, well, yes, in part as well, because we have only used the uh, literature that we have available um, for, for that matter. We do not really use benchmark material since we have just just uh, joined the, the network. In terms of interlaboratory trial uh, testing, we have uh, decided to participate with soil affair, and this will be used to perform a soil mapping work. In terms of the spectroscopy, the soil spectroscopy, we don't apply spectroscopy. We only run physical uh, analysis at this point. And when, when you hear me talk about physical trials, I mean, not just for uh, farming uh, purposes, but also uh, civil soil testing. In terms of our main needs, of course, we are in, in need of more people and well-trained people. Our equipment are obsolete. Most of them have uh, more than 30 years of, of, of use, and we definitely need to, uh, we need a refresh at our lab. Of course, we need maintenance too. And considering that our lab reports to a state-owned entity, there is no budget. It's 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 hard for the government, I believe, to to uh, to give us everything we need. In terms of infrastructure, we we do have a uh, proper infrastructure where we are um, where we are found. But what currently I believe that uh, being a part of FAO's uh, network, we will be uh, beneficiaries of, of many, many uh, instruments, uh, tools. Probably, we will we will be in a better, much better position now after being a member of this uh, network. And I include here training. Training is is badly needed. I believe this is part of what everyone has asking for. Thank you. Uh, look at the pictures now. Well, maybe you just see these uh, brick and mortar infrastructure. This is what we have and where we hold our laboratories and our bench testing uh, is done here. Uh, we have the vegetal physiology lab, which is mostly used on the right hand side, the top right side of this uh, slide. And we also run, as you may see here, pH testing, electrical conductivity, um, and other farming related trials. Podemos uh, determinar, ¿verdad?, aforos de, ¿verdad?, de la, los diferentes tipos de aforos, las calidades de cintas, eh, las pérdidas por uh, presión, por que, la cantidad que llega a, 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 de una fuente hasta donde se traslada, ¿verdad?, por todas las pérdidas que uno tiene, por los diferentes accesorios y todo. Y el más importante, ¿verdad? Y que tiene, pues, uh, más uh, ventas de servicio y sobre todo, todos son de capacitación, es el laboratorio de suelos donde el, los servicios que más uh, se venden, ¿verdad? Porque es servicio al cliente y se capacita y se investiga, son las granulometrías, las permeabilidades, ¿verdad? Entonces, uh, eh, 
nos sentimos pues agradecidos porque hemos sido seleccionados y que esperamos, ¿verdad? Que, que en todo este esfuerzo que, que están haciendo, pues, sea aprovechado por nosotros y pueda ser un servicio para todo el país y, y de beneficio para los proyectos que están llegando, ¿verdad? Muchas gracias. Continuamos con Carlos Sirias. Bueno, eh, buenas tardes a todos. Yo soy eh, Carlos Guirías de la UNAC, de la diapositiva. Pues. Eh, Carlos Guirías de la UNAC, eh, pues estamos ahí con ese laboratorio, que este laboratorio tiene apenas eh, tres años, ¿no? Entonces, es, este laboratorio es algo eh, es nuevo. Entonces, es, por eso no es que tenemos algunos, así como todos los laboratorios, que, de que problemas de que los equipos o de que, la, o de que ya están viejos. ¿no? En este caso, no. Siguiente. Entonces, eh, solo somos este, tres personas ahí. Eh, somos eh, somos eh, tres personas, ¿no? Que en realidad eh, somos tres, pero ahí lo hacemos de todo, ¿no? Eh, somos técnicos, somos los especialistas y entre los tres hemos hecho, pues, eh, este, varias cosas, ¿no? Hacemos, eh, pues, eh, hacemos pues eh, estos análisis eh, eh, químicos, físicos y algunos de la vida del suelo, ¿no? Que son dos, pero estamos iniciando con estos análisis en todo el país, ¿no? Eh, eh, hay entre unas mil muestras a mil quinientas muestras, pero estas muestras son este, más que todo de eh, estamos haciendo eh, como unas este de, o sea estamos haciendo estas muestras pero son eh, these este are the samples we take one thousand to fifteen hundred a year they are related to thesis projects or something similar and the idea is for this laboratory to be open to the public at large. As far as SOPs are concerned, practically 100% of the ones we use come from Glossolan. We conduct practically 10 analyses and all 10 correspond to the, these SOPs. Reference material, yes, we do work with reference material, but it's our own. We do not have a company that will provide us this, so we work with our own, our two samples. Uh, PTs, not yet. Hopefully, this year, we will be conducting the first round. Soil spectroscopy, I don't think so. I don't think. We have that in Honduras. Hopefully, with the Soil Fair project, we will be able to do that. As far as our priorities are concerned, specialty equipment. You all know that all laboratories want more and more equipment. And trained personnel. There's only three of us, as I mentioned. We do it all. One of our priorities, as such, would be to have more staff. And of course, when one purchases reagents, we do not necessarily understand them well. And so this is a problem, I would have to say, that the reagents take 10 to 11 months until they actually arrive, the long lead time, and that's a problem. You have some pictures of our laboratory. As you can see, it's only three years old. Everything's quite new. That's where we do all the analyses, chemical, physical, soil, etc. Thank you. Marcos Padilla from Honduras. Uh, 
Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. La, la diapositiva anterior, por favor. Previous slide, please. Good afternoon. My name is Marcos Padilla. I am a representative of the Chemical uh, Agricultural and Pesticide Residue Laboratory, the National Reference Laboratory. Next slide, please. Our staff consists of 16 individuals, technicians, analysts, agronomists, chemists, and some industrial engineers. As far as the services we provide, we provide services to farmers, producers, private and public companies, government authorities, and uh, research organizations. As far as the types of analyses we carry out, we conduct physical and chemical analyses on soil, foliar analyses on fertilizers, chemical and organic alike, soil improvements, for example, primarily uh, with uh, lime and uh, water analyses. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we conduct analyses on pesticide residue. In fact, that's part of the name of the laboratory. Uh, gas uh, chromatography techniques are used to that. Um, we work with uh, chlorated or organic components and others. 5,000 samples, 4,000 samples actually are what we uh, conduct annually. Uh, most of them are soil samples and the others are related to other matrices as mentioned. We use the SOPs for organic material only and similar to the ONUAC colleague, we have our own reference material. Do we take part in assays? Actually, yes, we do. The last time was back in 2022. I would like to correct something with regard to spectroscopy because we do not use it. This clearly was a, a mistake on the screen. We do not have that capacity. What are our priorities? Well, we have identified three. The first is to begin implementing soil biological analyses. We've already started that process, and we will be implementing two, which is macro, uh, macro bacterial respirometry and uh, carbon biomass. We also need to uh, implement more soil physical analyses and, of course, acquiring equipment. Allow me to underscore this. Right now, we're working with a project with Honduras called Sustainable Agribusinesses, and we receive funding through this. We are acquiring equipment, but we need more equipment as well because some of our pieces of equipment are quite outdated. You have some pictures of the laboratory. On the left, that shows the reception area. And only a portion of the soil department is shown here. And on the right, that's a side view of the laboratory because there are trees out front that are in the way. And uh, we had to take the picture from the side. So this is a quick summary of our laboratory. Thank you. All right then, Ricardo Peña to wrap up Honduras. Thank you. Thank you to FAO for this opportunity.
My name is Ricardo Peña. I represent the Samorano Soil Laboratory, which is part of the Samorano Honduran Agricultural School. It's an agricultural school that's been around for roughly 80 years. We work with students throughout all of uh, Latin America and the Caribbean. I am a soil professor and head of the laboratory. We are accredited under uh, 17,025. We are staffed by six individuals. We conduct uh, soil analyses for agricultural, chemical and physical, vegetable, tissue, uh, uh, rocks, mineral rocks, uh, water for irrigation, fertilizer. Uh, last year, we conducted 35 hundred sample analyses. We are implementing Glosolan SOPs partially for pH and organic matter, and we work with the WEPAL reference material. We do not have spectroscopy, but we would like to. We do have WEPAL, we have participated in WEPAL uh, aptitude assays as well. Maybe with the government, uh, we will be able to uh, receive support for uh, spectroscopy soon. And also, we work with uh, microwave analyses to speed up the delivery time and to reduce the analytical costs, which can be quite expensive in Honduras. And of course, as far as requirements are concerned or priorities, training, and here you can see some pictures of the laboratory. You can see the facilities, top part of the screen, and uh, some pieces of equipment and what we do at Samaran on the bottom part of the screen. Thank you. We will offer the floor to Jamaica, Pamela. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Pamela McKenzie. I'm representing the Soil Health and Plant Tissue Laboratory. I serve as the technical manager currently. Next, please. Our staffing capacity is 17. We have two soil scientists, one technical manager, two agrochemists, or senior laboratory technician junior technicians, and we have attendants. The analysis that we perform, we do macro elements, we do physical analysis, we do some biological, we do fertilizer to a lesser extent. On average, we are able to do 2,000 samples annually. However, with project activities, this amount will go up to 4,000 approximately. We do use glosolin SOPs to some extent. Yes, we do use reference material and we have participated in ring tests. We have been a part of Latsolan for six years. Yes, six years now. And no for the dry chemistry. And what are our major needs? Equipment maintenance, capacity building, and we are seeking accreditation on the ISO 17025. Next, please. Next, and this is a photograph of the external of our laboratory. We have a soil oven on the outside. Next, please. And this is the internal of the laboratory. There are various sections. So we have a general lab. We have an area for the reception of samples. We have an instrument room, a balance room, a physical lab, and we have a spec lab. We have our office areas and we have areas for storage. Thank you. For Mexico, we have two representatives. We have two reps on behalf of Mexico. First of all, Dr. Piña, Dr. Guerrero Piña. The floor is yours, Armando. Thank you. First of all, let me thank Sol Ortiz, the doctor, for inviting me. Thank you so much, Sol, for your invitation. 
I am here on behalf of the soil, land, and water agro industrial laboratory in uh, Mexico at the Tabasco campus. At our lab, we have five people, four technicians and one uh, laboratory manager. We run uh, soil analysis, chemical, physical, biological. We run plant, fertilizer, agro product uh, trials too, especially effluents from oil extracting machines. And we have uh, decreased the number of samples because the uh, analysts are older. Oh, in total, we do 1,500 uh, samples per year. We used to do this per person, but now this is the average at the lab. Now, in terms of the SOPs, we, we just have done uh, soil respiration uh, tests according to the SOPs, and we are running 13 days of uh, soil respiration. That was how it used to be. Now it's done in just a, a few minutes. We are uh, working since 1997, and we do have terms of reference. We have uh, a fewer uh, fewer uh, experts at the lab, so basically uh, we have a, a lower uh, activity rate at this point. The personnel is assessed uh, after the comparison uh, work is done, and we also do quality control. We have uh, soil spectroscopy, and this is part of the validation work. We need an NIRS uh, spectrometer, uh, uh, a near-infrared uh, spectrophotometer, and also we need a uh, an, a, an oven. Um, we need to... Uh, have more of these equipment because every laboratory at Me in Mexico should do quality control work. We know that many of the laboratories in Mexico don't have any benchmark or reference material. This is why we're asking for these equipment. We also need training so we can help the team to prepare their samples and their benchmark material too, the reference material too. This is the infrastructure. This is how our lab looks from outside. We have the vegetal uh, handling material, uh, handling area. And we see here that each particular activity has its own space. We have 5,000 samples, uh, vertical samples, as you may see on that shelf. We have a reception area. We have an office and 20 work stations are available at the lab. So when it comes to training, we have space, uh, enough space for 20 people. It's quite unlikely that we will go back to providing uh, service to privates because of the standards and the regulation, but we can provide training though. The campus director agrees that we start providing training uh, to private. So this is what we are getting ready to do. We have enough room for up to 20 people, as I said. We have an emergency area, a washing area, and don't forget we are at the tropic. We also have space for visitors, students, and we have the terms of reference dated 1997. We have a classroom at the lab too. This is the picture in the middle there on the top middle. Um, and well, as I had said, we have the eye washing area for emergency. There's the shower there and the fire extinguishers. This is, uh, in a nutshell, our lab. Thank you. Thanks a lot. OK, let's hear from Claudio, Claudio Hidalgo now. 
Hello, it's Claudia. I apologize. Um, Claudia Hidalgo represents the Fertility of Soil and Environmental Chemistry Laboratory, LAFIR. LAFIR is a decentralized lab in Mexico. It's a postgraduate uh, school. And we uh, have a physical, uh, excuse me, physics and chemistry uh, lab, also a morphology lab and soil uh, laboratory. We are part of the soil fertility and environmental chemistry lab. Those are the types of analysis we perform mainly. Uh, we have five um, scholars, all of them with a PhD. We have three technical pe uh, peers and administrative uh, one administrative person. We run uh, training for uh, human resources and uh, of different levels, high uh, level and lower levels too. And we provide uh, services to investigation, research projects, research and development projects. We mainly run chemical analysis of soil, uh, vegetal material, organic uh, fertilizers, and water. In terms of the number of samples, well, this may vary a lot. We've gone uh, up to as many as 15,000 uh, tests, depending on the research projects uh, in place, depending also on the number of uh, students who are uh, receiving their PhD uh, training. And we use the SOPs from Close to Land partly, those, especially those that match the techniques that we use. We are also active in the uh, proposal of some of the techniques at Close to Land the ones that you are applying in your labs in many cases. And as Daniel said, it's very important for us to compare um, our techniques against the other techniques from other labs, which are also part of the Closer Land Network. Um, we perform different sorts of analysis. And also important to say is that our soil fertility lab, which was created 30 years ago by Dr. Jorge Chevers, who is here with us today, by the way. Well, this lab was created uh, a long time ago. And since the 90s, we started to run quality control uh, testing. We did the first intercalibration program, which is now in the hands of Dr. Guerrero in Mexico. This is the uh, onset of what we have today, the uh, red salon in, in Mexico. So as you may see, this is a very um, long period of time. We have been around for, for many years, and Dr. Armando is helping us in the creation of uh, reference material. We produce our own material, reference material at the lab, and we also receive samples from around uh, the block, so to speak. We get information from other laboratories also in Mexico. We uh, run tests with NIST and IST uh, samples, and we have uh, quite a long and, and, and broad experience in our laboratories since the late 80s. We are not accredited because this laboratory provides services uh, to research workers only. However, we do have a quality control program in place that we continue to improve year after year. We run a soil spectroscopy in, in some areas, but mainly it's the NIR type. That is the spectroscopy we normally uh, perform for, of course, for research uh, purposes too. And once we go from the plants, we can continue with soil and other materials in spectroscopy. 
we of course have needs as every other lab has such as the uh, updating of our equipment administrative uh, improvements and the harmonization of techniques so we can do a better job this is one of the areas we need to uh, harmonize such as um organic carbon this is one of the areas we want to standardize and if i can go back to take you back to those pictures um i wanted to highlight two two things first of all the edavology building which is the um, left hand side picture this is the building and this is the team uh, our laboratory members i just wanted to share this picture with you because uh, just to stress the fact that this this, this laboratory work is, is all about teamwork it's, it's group work people working together um, teamwork is, is very critical this is what will drive success to the work we perform we may have um, many many uh, high uh, level equipment however we cannot accomplish uh, our goals without uh, united work in that picture on the right hand side you can see the lab inside how it looks inside everyone knows how it is to work in a lab i just wanted to, to drive your attentions to the carbon analysis area since year 2000 we've been applying the environmental analysis techniques to run carbon tests including uh, greenhouse effect biochemical tests with carbon and of course fertilizers i just wanted to give you a sample of what the fertility lab is doing and also the environmental uh, lab is doing thank you so much for your attention los laboratorios que nos dieron a conocer lo que hacían en el en el presente en todas sus zonas. Gracias. Agradecemos a Diane Delgado por esta intervención y avisarles que en virtud del tiempo el resto de los países van a poder presentar en la jornada que se desarrolla a partir de mañana en Chillán. Y, y continuamos con las conclusiones y las observaciones finales que van a estar a cargo de María de los Ángeles Sepúlveda, ella es de la Universidad de Concepción y presidenta de Latzolán y Renalach. Bueno, muchas gracias. Eh, disculpen que tuvimos que cortar las presentaciones eh, antes de que pudieran finalizar, pero lamentablemente por tem temas de logística vamos a tener que continuar en Chillán. De todas maneras, todos van a tener un espacio para poder eh, presentar eh, la realidad de sus países. Bueno, en relación a las conclusiones, yo quiero comenzar por decirles y, y citar al director general de la FAO que dice el suelo es la madre de la agricultura, la madre de la vida. C considero que se gesta a través de él las más importantes necesidades del ser humano y para ello debemos recuperar nuestros suelos. Glossolan y Latzolan juegan un rol importante en esta materia en relación a la información que se obtiene del estado de este recurso. Sabemos que los suelos se encuentran bajo presión debido al crecimiento poblacional, a la demanda de alimentos y a los diversos usos del, de, del suelo. Aproximadamente un 33% de los suelos mundiales están degradados. En este workshop, que se titula Caminos hacia la precisión en el análisis de suelo, avances de los laboratorios de suelos de América Latina y el Caribe, es un taller que está colaborando estrechamente con la falta de datos públicos de calidad sobre el suelo y las prácticas agrícolas lo que dificulta la toma de decisiones y las gestiones públicas. Proyectos como Soil Fair y Soil Care son una base importante de aplicabilidad de esto. En una mirada regional, como vimos en las presentaciones, nos permitieron comprender la importancia del vínculo en la relación de producción y de medio ambiente, donde surge la importancia en la sostenibilidad en la agricultura o de la agricultura, mayor producción y seguridad alimentaria. Ana nos habló de asistencias como, por ejemplo, protocolo manejo sostenible de suelos, nos habló de Soil Care, de Soil Fair y de doctores por los suelos. Lo que serán una tremenda contribución a las comunidades, dado que simplifican la entrega de información a través de hermosos recursos técnicos como los que nos presentó Ana. 
cuya simpleza entrega mensajes claves en estas gestiones. Nuevos temas surgen en relación a contaminantes, pero además Ana nos da la oportunidad de contribuir y desarrollar conocimiento en relación a indicadores de calidad de suelo, por ejemplo, eh, por ejemplo, los indicadores de suelo son de importancia, pero también tenemos eh, el objetivo de poder nosotros plantear cuáles son las inquietudes importantes. Considero de que debemos aprovechar la oportunidad de discutirlo en el último día de nuestra jornada y de este taller. También nos informaron desde FAO en Roma del apoyo que presta la Alianza Mundial en el Suelo en la gobernanza de suelos en los países y cómo ellos contribuyen al contacto entre socios de manera integral con el fin de colaborar en las gestiones nacionales relacionadas a la evaluación, al mapeo y monitoreo de la salud de los suelos, para lo cual la armonización de datos es trascendental. También el manejo sustentable de ellos y la promoción de conocimientos en estas materias. También nos comentaron del apoyo en la generación de alianzas nacionales por el suelo, así como el contacto con los puntos focales que a veces es tan necesario. ASLAC, por ejemplo, participa en actividades como, por ejemplo, SoilFair y SoilCare, con, eh, contribuyen al manejo de suelos, a comunidades de prácticas, a generar webinars, talleres, entre otros. Se viene un simposio muy importante que nos comentaron acá, que abordará temáticas con el objetivo de promover la importancia de la salud de los suelos en septiembre de este año, donde espero que podamos conectarnos y participar. Cada una de las intervenciones eh, de, de ASLAC y de la, AM, de la Alianza Mundial por el Suelo destacan la, importante, la importancia del labor que realizamos nosotros en los laboratorios y les agradecemos siempre su apoyo y el respaldo constante en nuestras gestiones. Gracias a Diana y a cada uno de ustedes por mostrarnos sus laboratorios y acercarnos a su realidad. Me parece que compartimos necesidades como responsables de los laboratorios. Las necesidades más grandes se reflejaron y se pueden resumir en términos de infraestructura, material de referencia interno, material de calidad y eh, participación de ejercicios de intercomparación, entre otros. Son necesidades que compartimos y que tenemos que abordar en este taller. Los desafíos que hemos enfrentado y que, se viene, eh, y que se vienen han sido y son importantes, sin embargo, hemos avanzado a un buen ritmo en materia de armonización con el objetivo de mejorar la calidad de la información, por lo que no me cabe duda de que continuaremos sorteando los desafíos que se aproximan. Hoy, quienes estamos aquí, tenemos una gran responsabilidad, la de velar por un futuro sostenible donde el suelo tenga el cuidado que merece. Gracias a la información que nosotros estamos proporcionando desde los laboratorios día a día. Termino agradeciendo a cada una de las delegaciones y el esfuerzo que han hecho para estar aquí hoy día. Agradezco al comité directivo de LATSOLAN por apoyarnos y por estar generando ideas constantemente para poder tratar con ustedes. Agradezco al comité directivo de RENALAT por apoyarnos en todo lo que fue la gestión de este workshop. Y a cada uno de ustedes les agradezco. De manera especial quiero agradecer a Filipo porque se ha preocupado constantemente de que cada uno de los detalles salgan a la perfección. No puedo dejar de mencionar a Arturo, a Javiera, a Magdalena, entre otros actores de FAO de acá de la región y de, otros, y de otros lugares que estuvieron muy activos y presentes. A la Sociedad Chilena de las Ciencias del Suelo a través de la participación tan activa. Now, thanks to Yasna to the SAG as well, specifically through Rodrigo Osorio, our focal point. He has been key for all of this, uh, making this a success in Santiago. Finally, I would like to thank Eric Sagal, Marco Sandoval, Guillermo Wells, and Carlos Saavedra, the university president. And I wish you a very fruitful event. I hope that this will be a wonderful opportunity for networking amongst each other within individual countries. Uh, we are all quite uh, unified here in Latin America. So the best of luck to you. Thank you. And now we will do the necessary arrangements for the final adieu. Thank you, Maria de Los Angeles. Thank you to everyone else, the more than 200 individuals who have joined us remotely.